play down to our competition. We've had some slow starts. We haven't gotten out of the gates. We've had some penalties and we've done some things, but I think our guys are still trying. They're still trying to maintain their focus. And uh, tonight, you know, I've, I've got to think as you look across the field, uh, Tensaw brings some players over. Uh, and uh, it's a good-looking team over there. I mean, some good-looking athletes, not a lot of numbers. And, uh, you know, you look at their record so far this season and you think, you know, this is a team the Eagles are going to need to get started early and, uh, and, and, and finish strong. Yeah, there's definitely an opportunity to start early um, against this bunch. They, they beat Lakeview the first, uh, I think that's who it was, Lakeview the first game of the season. And um, since then they've gone 0-6 uh, after they won their, their first game of the year. And roster size on, on, on paper, they have about 21 uh, on the roster. Fitch, you mentioned they're young, though. I think they have a couple eighth graders that will be starting uh, kind of in the trenches. So, um, you know, that, that's, that's, a, that's a mismatch. we got a se uh, all seniors on our uh, offensive line unless uh, Weatherford's out. And I'm not yet. It looks like uh, Andy Weatherford's um, going to be out tonight, so we hope he has a, a quick recovery. Balsamo's done a great job filling in, but... You know, that's a place we see a mismatch. You know, we'll, we'll run the ball, but I don't want to get too far, um, you know, ahead of ourselves when it, when it comes to that. But, uh, you know, we're thankful that these guys come over here out of the – this is the sixth meeting. All, all six meetings have, will have been here uh, in Monroe um, at Eagle Stadium. So, you know, they, we, we uh, cater them when they come here. I think Co Coach Fitchie uh, provides a meal for them and very good hospitality. And, uh, and you know, and they, they cater to us by, by coming and playing here at, at our stadium. Well, I will tell you this. I think I have broadcast all six of the games that we're talking about. Um, we've, uh, you know, it, it, it has been since uh, since 2013 in, in a row now. And uh, with the exception of last year, I think we had a yeah, COVID, COVID uh, game there. That got yeah, called. that got canceled last year. There were two, uh, 2015 and 16, we did not play them. So I don't know if there's a district shakeup there, but 13, 14, 17, 19, and 20. Uh, well, I'll tell you this. Every time they come over here, you're, gonna, you're not going to see anything but a really good you know, very cordial, uh, mm -hmm. respectful group of guys that come over here and play. It's never chippy. It's never, never gets out of hand. These guys just come over and they play. Uh, they play a good brand of football. And they're, they're gonna. I'm telling you right now. You and I both can see it as they're going through the pregame. They do have a nice looking uh, group of athletes on the field, and they will do whatever they can to upset the Washington Christian Eagles tonight. Yeah, they're gonna they're gonna show up to play. I mean, you, you can count on that. I mean, the average score of the five games has been 50 to six, so it's been a, a, a lopsided affair. But still, time after time, you mentioned it. They're gonna show up. They're gonna play, and and uh, they're gonna put their best out there. The Eagles are coming off a nice win last week at uh, over Delta Delta Charter. Uh, the uh, the Eagles able to uh, defeat the Storm 50 60 56 to eight. The Panthers coming off a tough loss last week uh, to Del High uh, 18. To 12. Both teams, well, at least the Eagles have gone in as they uh, they completed their warm-up drills. The Panthers still on the field. Tensaw comes over tonight. And what i got to tell you is some pretty cool-looking uniforms. They've got baby blue or powder blue pants. Carolina blue right there. <laughs> white, white jerseys with uh, with powder blue numbers and a, uh, and a sharp uh, navy blue helmet. And uh, good-looking uniforms out there for the Tensaw Panthers. We're going to be getting tonight's contest underway in about eight minutes. We're going to take our second break from here at Fitzhugh Field, Eagles Stadium. The Washita Christian Eagles hosting the Tensaw Panthers homecoming 2021 here at Washita Christian. You're listening to Washita Christian Eagle football on 92.3 The Wolf. Agents Chris Thomas and Tanner Baggett, Stephen Fitzhugh Field, Washita Christian Eagle Stadium. The Eagles uh, homecoming 2021 going to be playing host to the Tensaw Panthers. Tensaw High School is located in St. Joseph, Louisiana. 
in uh, Tensaw Parish. The Panthers had about an hour and 45 minute bus ride to get over here to Eagle Stadium tonight. It's a pretty good haul for uh, for the Panthers. Of course, uh, you know, if your friend uh, your friend of mine saw was driving, it would have taken him about an hour and 15 minutes. Uh, he's uh, he's legendary for a pretty heavy foot. The head coach for the Panthers in his third season is uh, Quentin Powell. Coach Powell with an overall record of um, well two wins against against 32 losses. The head coach for the Washita Christian Eagles in his 24th season is Stephen Fitzhugh. Coach Fitzhugh with a career record of 221 wins against 76 losses. The Eagles enter tonight's contest 7-0, 6-0 in district play, ranked number one in, the cli in Class 1A by the Louisiana Sports Writers Association. The Panthers come into tonight's game with a record of 1-6. They're 0-6 in district and are not ranked in the same poll. Well, you know, we talked about this last week. There's, when we say polls, there's a lot of polls out there. There's a lot of, you know, different people ranking, you know, uh, uh, select, non-select, combined polls. But, but, but really, when you start getting towards the end of the season, one poll is the only one that you need to watch, and that's the, uh, the power rankings on the LHSAA's website. I know you keep up with those, and I know you checked in on it this week. How do we shake out? No, we sit at number one. We made the jump after last week's game, so no, we're sitting on the top right now. But, you know, honestly, these next two games, um, you know, we can, it, it has nothing to do with margin of victory or anything like that. It has to do with uh, your opponent's strength of schedule and getting the win um, and their classification. So since these are district games uh, against teams that have very few wins, um, we can actually drop in the rankings by winning uh, over the next two weeks. It really depend on what our, um, you know, second, third, fourth, uh, you know, what, what they do. Uh, so in the um, in the select, we're ranked number one right now, and and again, I fully expect that to change. Uh, and so again, looking ahead, that makes the Mangum game a really big game because they're a quality team. They're, they're up in classification, and so that's a, that's what we call a, a money game or a point game. You know, so you can get points and you can really make a jump in, in the standings from playing games like that. Well, the Eagles have never lost to the Tennessee Panthers, and I, I think, well, I mean, I can tell you right now, I think we're going to win tonight, but that's what I think. Mm -hmm. I don't know how the Eagles get it done tonight, but I know a guy who told me earlier that he knows exactly how they, they get it done, and he's going to give them to me right now with Daniels' ways to win. All right, so uh, you mentioned the game against Delta, uh, Delta Charter last week. That, was, that game was about Tristan Wiley. Seven catches, 241 yards, four touchdowns, record-setting night. It was a, a great atmosphere, um, you know. But this week, it's about focus. It really is. The homecoming festivities, uh, you know, coming off a, a big margin of, margin of victory last week. And it's about take care of business. Exactly what Coach Fitch, you said before the game. But here, here we go. You ready for this? I've been ready. I've been ready the whole time. If you look at our scores, it looks like our offense is just clicking on, on all cylinders. But I, I think it's our defense that's been clicking pretty well. We saw Delta Charter make a drive in the first quarter last week. It finished the quarter a point up on us, and our defense made an adjustment right away. So we've seen our defense make quick adjustments. Uh, we've seen quality depth with our defense, able to make those adjustments with pers personnel. We've seen good tackling. You know, Fitchie, Fitchie said he wanted more turnovers, but other than that, our defense has been playing great. So we talked about while he landed was 9 of 9 for 260-plus uh, yards last week, but seven of those throws were to Wiley, and four of them were for touchdowns. So at some point, David, it's not about tonight. But this is a night where we can polish our offense, and that's what we need to do. At some point, there's, we're going to play a team with the scheme and the personnel that may be able to contain or slow down uh, the, the Grays Wiley combination. So I think the Eagles need to polish their offense and find ways to get the ball around to other people in case there is a team that we match up with that makes it hard for us to throw the ball over the top. Well, I'm going to have to say that I agree with you on everything you just said. And we got to go down and talk to Stan, who's got the coin toss for tonight's game. Zebra hit his heads, the three conferences are tails. We're on the turf tonight, so I can let it hit. You gonna call heads? Tails? Call tails, baby. I'm looking at heads. OCS, one toss. What you want, gentlemen? One ball. One ball. Gentlemen, put you in the field. You want to finish. On the toss, we got the ball. On the toss, we went to receive you guys. <laughs> All right, thanks a lot. Stan Humphreys with the Marion State Bank sideline report. And the Eagles have won the coin toss for tonight's game. We're going to take a break from here at Eagle Stadium and invite you to come back and join us for the kickoff of tonight's contest. Uh, homecoming 2021 here at Fitzhugh Field, Eagle Stadium. You're listening to Washington Talk Christian Eagle football on 92.3. The Wolf. All right, thanks, John.
Washita Christian Eagle Stadium. The Washita Christian Eagles hosting the Tensile Panthers homecoming 2021 here at Eagle Stadium. Handling the kicking chores for the Panthers is going to be number 53, Tyler Matthews. Matthews tees this ball up at the 40-yard line and deep. For the Eagles is going to be number three, Tristan Wiley. Wiley's going to field this one cleanly at the 15, and he is going to take a knee. And that's exactly where the Eagles will start their first possession of the night. First down and 10 at the 15-yard line. Well, the, uh, the Eagles obviously looking to get uh, something going with their offense here. Uh, Looked like Tristan, that was a returnable ball, but um, probably through instruction. Um, in coach's direction, he, he took a knee around the, uh, the, the 16-yard line. Well, let's hope so, because yep. if you took a knee, <laughs> yep. that would be a, I would think there'd be some disappointment on the sideline. But it is going to be first down and 10 for the Washita Christian Eagles. They'll have the ball at their own 15-yard line. Junior quarterback Landon Graves is going to bring the Eagles to the line. Graves is going to start with two receivers to his right, one to his left, and the lone running back with him in the backfield. They're going to hand turns this one immediately up the field. Strickland going to pick up nice yardage over on the left-hand side of the Eagle offensive line. A gain of four yards on first down. It's going to bring up second down and six for the Eagles. It was just a straight handoff to Chad. Chad went off the uh, the left tackle there. and, and uh, like He got hit about the uh, two yards past the line of scrimmage. able to pick up a couple extra yards here. Second down and six for Washita Christian. Ball with their own 19-yard line. Opening drive of tonight's game. Graves in the shotgun, sends a man in motion across the formation. Turner's going to give this one to Strickland, and Strickland's going to have some running room. He's going to go across the 25-yard line, a gain of five yards on the play. It looks like that'll bring up third down and one for the Eagles as they spot this football. It looks just shy of the 25-yard line. Well, that was, uh, he was tackled by number 21, but I look at my uh, tensile roster here, and 21 is one of the numbers that does not have a player uh, uh, beside it. So uh, that was a nice tackle, though, by number 21. It was. It was. It's going to be third down and one. First third down of the night for the Eagles. Opening drive of tonight's contest. Third down and a yard. Gray's going to operate out of the shotgun. Strickland will join him in the gun. Two receivers to Gray's right, one to his left. Third down and one. Good snap from center. Fakes this one, keeps it himself, and Landon's got some running room. He's across the 40, now he's across the midfield. He's across the 40, the 30, down inside the 20, down to the 10, the 5. Touchdown, Washita Christian. Number 5, Landon Graves is going to take that one in himself from 75 yards out. A little play action uh, read to Strickland, and he decided to keep it and takes it to the house. Nice to see Landon Graves kind of get involved in the running game a little bit. I, I think sometimes people forget he is a very talented runner. That touchdown brought to you by the fine folks at Trinity Diamonds Direct. I'm going to tell you something, Dave. You made the right decision, but around the 30-yard line, um, it looked like two guys were about to catch up with him, and, and Landon's got another gear. He took <laughs> off. <laughs> well, there's no sense in keeping that gear yourself. Yeah, you know? right. Sometimes you've got to open it up a little bit. Number one, Sam Harold on to attempt the extra point for the Eagles. Sam's done an excellent job so far this season on all of his extra point attempts. Number 13, Tate Handy will come on to handle the holding chores for the Eagles as they take an early 6 to nothing lead. High snap, Tate gets it down. Nice handling that time. I'll tell you what, that, that's called a wide receiver playing uh, holder, right? I mean, that, uh, that, was, that, was, that was not what you were looking for on the snap, but Tate able to grab it, get it down, and uh, Sam able to split the uprights. And uh, a mature kicker as well. I think Sam's been kicking for us now for three seasons. I can tell you this, he didn't chop his steps, he didn't mess up, he just took his time and split the uprights. And to add to the Eagles now, 7-0 lead. He's got 157 attempts in his career. Career. He's third all time on <laughs> for uh, Washington Christian kickers for, with 157 attempts. So he, yeah, he's been there time and time. Well, he has. 57. He has. Now here's the thing. I remember when St Sam first started bad snap the curtains yep. over. Done. Yep. That time just took his time and eased into it. So nice placement and uh, and a nice kick as the Eagles take an early seven to nothing lead. Let's go down to the sideline and check in with Stan Humphreys for the Marion State Bank sideline report. Stan needed to get out uh, early and uh, you know not make any mistakes on that opening drive. It looks like that's what they were able to do. 
They, uh, they were, guys. You know, we were able to run the ball there. It was third down and uh, a little bit of a read there by Landon on the defensive end. Uh, he was going outside uh, uh, with Chad and he pulled it when the end went with him and uh, he turned it up the middle and tell you what, use his speed. It's good to get that on film to let other teams in our future see that. Absolutely. Th thanks a lot, Stan. Stan Humphreys with the Marion State Bank sideline report. Sam Harrell is going to kick this one inside the 10-yard line. Going to be fielded cleanly down there by the uh, four of the Panthers. But a nice kick and good coverage by the Eagle special teams. Gain of 11 yards on the return, and it looks like those, the Panthers will start this drive. Uh, let's call it uh, first down to 10 at their own 14-yard line. Assume we're starting position to, uh, to where the Eagles were on their first drive. And uh, so see what the Eagles defense comes out with on on their first uh, first drive on defense. Be interesting to see uh, see how the Panthers line up to attack this uh, this Eagle defense. The Eagles lead this contest right now, seven to nothing. Ten minutes and eleven seconds left to play here in the first quarter. Great night for football here in Monroe, Louisiana. Stephen Fitzhugh Field, Washita Christian, Eagle Stadium. It looks like number 15, Ima well, let's see, it is going to be Imaj Bethel is going to handle the quarterbacking duties for the Panthers. He'll line up in the shotgun. He gets a really, really, really low snap from center. It's not handled, and it looks like this one may, may go to the Eagles. Really poor snap, and unfortunately for the Panthers, that's exactly what's going to happen. So the first play of the game is going to result in a turnover for Tensaw. They're going to give the football to the Eagles. And it's going to be first down and 10. The Eagles will find themselves now with the football first and 10 at the Panther 11-yard line. Inside the Randall's fine meet red zone already on this drive with, uh, with great field position on the 10 soft fumble. They're uh, lining up for a field goal. And that is exactly what it looks like is going to happen. Sam Harrell is going to try. I think this is the first field goal of the year. I yeah, think yeah I don't think we've kicked one for three this year. We, we had one attempt, and the snap was mishandled, so... Tate Hamby's going to line this one up. 29-yard attempt for Sam Harrell. First attempt of the season. Good snap this time. A good hold. Sam's kick is up and wide left. Wide left, <laughs> wide left as uh, Sam's kick is going to travel wide left. But you know what? Hey, great, man. It's nice to tip your hat to, uh, to Coach Fitzhugh as uh, you never know. You know, you may need one of those field goals down the road to, uh, to, to win a football game. And, Unfortunately, just unable to split the uprights. But the cool thing about high school football is it did break the plane to the goal line. Mm -hmm. So as soon as it breaks the plane, it's coming out to the 20-yard line. So it'll be first down and 10 for, uh, for the Panthers at their own 20-yard line. Field goal, those three points can become very valuable uh, at some point in, in the season. And like you mentioned, that was our, our first one that we got off for, th for three. And it was, it was wide left, but that's something that you have to know whether he can make it or, he, you know, he's going to miss it or what it's going to happen. So those... Uh, he may see another opportunity, maybe not tonight, but in the future, uh, to, to try to get those three points. Well, I got a feeling that, that we may uh, we may see it again. Number 15. Well, actually, yeah, it is going to be number 15, Amaje Butler. Butler's going to take the snap from center. He turns. He hands this one off to the deep back in the formation. Boy, I tell you what, he has met with some violence. As uh, looked like a wall of green, going to be a loss of four yards on the play as uh, the Eagles shut down the running game inside. A little toss play that time for the Panthers and just unable to get anything going. Looked like we had penetration and it uh, looked like uh, nice tackling in the backfield. So a loss of four yards going to bring up now second down and 14 for the Panthers at their own 16-yard line. Well, this is, the, this is your starting defensive line, and I think they anticipate their snaps being limited tonight, so they're full bore, and uh, I think about six of them uh, got an assist on, on that tackle there. I mean, they, were, they, they swarmed the ball carrier. Imaje Bethel will line up in the shotgun. Two receivers to his left, three to his right. Empty backfield. Bethel looks to throw and does. He's got a receiver. That's going to be intercepted by Tristan Wiley. And Wiley is going to work his way through the 20 down to around the 15-yard line where he'll be brought down there. So the opening possession of the uh, for the Panthers results in a fumble. And the second possession is going to result in an interception by number three, Tristan Wiley. Gain of 15 yards on the return. So it's going to be first down now and 10 for the Eagles. 
Well, actually, we got a penalty marker on the field. Looks like our defense is still out there. And it looks like the Eagles are walking. Uh, yeah, they're going to walk a penalty off against the Eagles. So now they're going to have a personal foul roughing the passer mm. against the Eagles. And boy, that's a rough one. That's going to be a 15 yard penalty. So you're going to negate the interception and put a 15 yard gain on the board for the Panthers. Well, I'm not certain what happened. I'm, I, maybe somebody just came in low on him uh, late, you know, after he released the ball. But, uh, but yeah, definitely. You know, they'll take away 15 yards of uh, Tristan Wiley's return yards, which also he's 11th all time in OCS return yards for uh, interception return yards. And I was going to fix and ask. I wonder if he if he moved up a few spots on, on that list, uh, along with all the other lists he's on. <laughs> well, it's going to be first down and 10 for the Panthers following that penalty. They spot this football at the Tinsaw 30 yard line. Imaje Bethel, number 15 for the Panthers, will bring them to the line. Again, with uh, an empty backfield, two receivers to his left, three to his right. The Panthers traveling from right to left on your radio dial, and we are going to have an early timeout taken by the Panthers. We're going to take a break with them. You're listening to Washita Christian Eagle Football on 92.3. The Wolf, the Eagles, with uh, with an eight to nothing lead here at Eagle Stadium. Coming 2021 for the Washita Christian Eagles hosting the Tensaw Panthers. Washita Christian leading this contest seven to nothing. Now the scoreboard here at Eagle Stadium is going to show you eight, but I can assure you that uh, unless we're getting two points for the uh, for the Harold extra point, uh, it's going to be seven to nothing here uh, in tonight's game. The Panthers with a uh, with a big roughing the passer penalty able to pick up a first down here. So it's going to be first down and 10 for Tensaw. Ball at their own 30-yard line. Now we're going to have four wide receivers to the left, one to the right, an empty backfield for Imaj Bethel. Bethel is going to take this one, fire it out in the flat quickly. It's going to be complete to, uh, to number three. That's uh, Jaquan Gibson. And Gibson's going to actually, well, you know, I don't know if he wanted to. <laughs> I don't know if he wanted to catch that one because he's going to lose five yards on the play. It's going to bring up now second down and 15 for the Panthers. Just a little uh, flare out um, by Gibson there, but Zach White able to shake off the blocker and, and bring him down for a, a tackle for loss. Great, nice tackle by Zach. Second down and 15 for Tensaw. Ball at the Eagle, or I should say Eagle, at the, uh, the, the Panther 25-yard line. Clock continuing to run. Six minutes and 40 seconds left to play in the first quarter of tonight's contest. Eagles lead seven to nothing. They're going five wide, David. They <laughs> are indeed. Three right, two left. Bethel in the gun, good snap from center. This time has some time, unloads this one. He's got a man. Ooh. And boy, I tell you what, if he wanted to catch that football, I think that he could have. Looked like that time, uh, kind of drifting in towards the middle of the field. Uh, didn't really want to outstretch his arms a whole lot for that, for that pass. And, uh, I thought it was a well-thrown ball that time by Bethel, but it's going to fall incomplete, bring up third down and 15 for Tensaw. I thought the same thing. Uh, that was Jaquan uh, Gibson again, and, and he actually has, had some room to uh, maybe pick up a few yards after the catch if he would have hauled it in. Uh, he went up there, and at the last minute, it looks like he, he withdrew his hands just a little bit, enough for the ball to go sailing wide. So it's going to bring up big third down here for the Panthers if they want to keep this drive alive. Three receivers to Bethel's right. Two to his left. The Panthers traveling from right to left on your radio dial. Bethel in the shotgun's got a running back with him in the gun. Good snap from center this time. He looks to roll. He's feeling some immediate pressure, but he unloads it, and he's got a receiver with some running room. The Eagles are going to come up and make an open field tackle, a nice one that time, but the pass was complete to number six, Javier Thomas. Thomas hauls it in with a nice run after the catch, a gain of 10 yards on the play, but it's going to bring up fourth down and four for the Panthers. Not sure what they're going to do in this situation. Obviously, you would think that they would punt the football, but uh, I think they may be letting them play tonight, and uh, 
that may be exactly what happens here. So it's fourth down and four for Tinsaw. And they are going to go for it. Three receivers split wide to Bethel's right. Two to his left, an empty backfield as they go five wide. Fourth down and four. Bethel, good snap from center. He looks like he's going to run this one, and that was a mistake. As the Eagle defense hovers around him, and they're going to bring him down for a loss of four yards on the play. And the Eagles will take over on downs as they spot this football at the, at the well, let's call it the, uh, the, well, the Panther 31-yard line, where it's going to actually be first down and 10 for Washita Christian. Five minutes left to play here in the first quarter. Eagles lead 7 to nothing. Let's go down to the sideline and check in with Stan Humphreys with the Marion State Bank sideline report. How's it going down there, Stan? Well, guys, you know, turnover and downs right there uh, in Tinsaw's area. They're about the 33-yard line for our offense to come back out on the uh, on the field. It's a good job there uh, by the defense getting pressure on the quarterback when it was an empty set with five wides. So uh, just looking for the offense probably here working on a little bit of the running game. We worked on the passing game a lot last week, so we'll see. All right, thanks a lot, Stan. Stan Humphreys with the Marion State Bank sideline report. Graves in the shotgun. Strickland joins him in the gun. Good snap from center. Graves looked to throw and does. He's got Wiley at the about the 10-yard line, and that's going to result in another Washita Christian Eagle touchdown as Graves finds Tristan Wiley. 33 yards on the pass play. Touchdown, Washita Christian. That touchdown brought to you by the fine folks at Trinity Diamonds direct as the Eagles add to uh, to a seven nothing lead 13 to nothing you know Wally uh, just kind of ran a uh, a corner route a flag route and laid right over the top the coverage was not bad but throw and catch it was it was uh, something that we've we've kind of gotten used to but it was it was a really nice throw uh, throw and catch there from Graves to Wiley Tate Hamby to hold kick is up and boy he's just slid it in the left upright as Sam Harrell splits him to add to the Eagle lead now 14 to nothing and, and I'll tell you one thing Daniel that I've seen too from this team is we we do and, I, and I'm not I, I'm believe me in no way Tristan Wiley the, the things that he's done this year are, are you know nothing not that big a surprise to a lot of people that have you know seen this this young man mature and grow he, and he does some fantastic things in space and you know makes great catches but that right there I gotta tell you something that was as well a thrown pass <laughs> as you're gonna see I mean you talked you said well, you had pretty good coverage you know why because it was pretty good coverage yes it was that ball could not have been thrown any better than it was and and boy a nice catch but it helps when you can put something you know put it right where you want to well we've seen uh you know we've seen Wiley catch catch several of those long play long touchdown passes in stride and um, you know, credit to offensive line, credit to the quarterback. One thing I do want to mention, number 56, senior Casey Cobb, who got the sack on that uh, fourth and four. That's his 16th career sack. He was fourth all-time coming into this game uh, for career sacks, and so he just added one to that number. Well, Tristan Wiley, if I'm not mistaken, he picked up his 18th touchdown catch 18. just then. Mm -hmm. So you got 16. I'm telling you, if... if if I was Casey, I'd be looking for some action on that. I'd, uh -huh. I'd, I'd make a bet on that one. I, yep. I challenge, uh, challenge my receiver to get more touchdown catches than I get sacked. That's right. That's right. But that's season, career, you know. But, Absolutely. But still, but still, you know. Sam Harrell puts this one in play from the 40-yard line, a high end-over-end -end kick that's going to travel inside the five-yard line of the Tensaw Panthers. On the return is number four, Daquan Gibson. And Gibson is going to do something that you really don't want to do a lot of, and that's run mm -hmm. sideline to sideline on a kickoff return. Good coverage that time by the Eagles as uh, it looks like they'll spot this football about the 16-yard line, a gain of 11 yards on the return. Yeah, good pursuit again. John Turner, number 35, um, able to track him down and bring him down. But you know, like you mentioned, he didn't just run side to side, but he started backwards a little bit on that. And that's, that's really, you know, along with that, you don't ever want to do those things on a kickoff. you got to go. Absolutely. First down and 10 for the Panthers. Four minutes and 28 seconds left to play here in the first quarter. Washita Christian leads this game 14 to nothing. Initial possession of the Eagles resulting in a touchdown. Second one, a missed field goal. And the third one, another touchdown. Panthers have really been had a, had a tough time getting it on track. Imaje Bethel is going to throw the football out of the shotgun. He's going to get hit as he throws. It's going to be incomplete. Good pressure that time by the Eagle defense and uh, pretty good coverage as uh, it's going to bring up second down and 10 for the Panthers. Yeah, Ryder Bentley on the left defensive end and uh, strong side linebacker. Noah Lovelady got in the backfield and 
and not only put some pressure, but got a, got a hit on the quarterback there as, uh, as he released it. Second down and 10 for Tensaw. Quarterback Imaje Bethel is trying to get the Panthers on track. So far been unsuccessful. Biggest gain of the night was a, uh, an unsportsmanlike conduct uh, late hit penalty on Bethel. Bethel again looks to throw, puts this one up in the air, and it looks like it's intercepted on the far side of the field, and they are going to give it to him. It is going to be a catch. It's going to be first down for the Eagles as it looked like Wiley comes up with another career interception. Yeah, good coverage there. The ball, as he got hit, the ball uh, just floated up in the air, and, and Wiley actually made a really good catch. Got kept his feet in bounds to, uh, to haul in that interception. The Eagles find themselves now with the football. First down and 10. Ball at their own 20-yard line. Inside the Randalls find me red zone as they start this drive. First down and 10 for the Eagles. Fourth possession so far tonight. Three minutes and 45 seconds left to play here in the first quarter. Washita Christian 14, Tensaw 0. A little delay in uh, getting this thing started, but now we're ready to play. Landon Graves, junior quarterback, is going to have two receivers to his left, one to his right. Strickland joins him in the shotgun. Good snap from center. Play action pay, fake. He's going to throw this one out in the flat, and that's going to be complete to none other than 33. Noah Lovelady. Lovelady with a nice catch and a nice run. I tell you what, I love that play action and throwing to the fullback. There's nothing better than throwing to the fullback. A gain of 14 yards on the play, and that's enough for a community pharmacy first down. Inside the Randall's Fine Meat Red Zone. It's going to be first down and goal at the seven-yard line for the Eagles. Three minutes and 12 seconds left to play here in the first quarter. Tonight's first quarter sponsor, the Darren Dugan Agency, American National, for all your home, auto, life, business, and insurance needs. Call Darren Dugan today, 318-807-2100. First down and goal for the Eagles. Ball at the Panthers' seven-yard line. Graves in the shotgun. Strickland joins him in the gun. They sent a man in motion. That's Culp across the formation. Graves looks, finds Culp out in the flat. Culp with a nice stop and start move. But unfortunately, the Panthers with some pretty good pursuit as Culp is going to pick up one yard on the reception. Daniel, it looked like he was about to make one man miss and slip into the end zone. But tip your hat to Tensaw that time. Nice pursuit down the line of scrimmage as they stop Culp for a one-yard game. Yeah, good pursuit. Two guys uh, brought him down. Very nice move after the catch. You know, that's just uh, quick thinking, quick feet, and... You know, uh, Cole, love lady seeing these guys touch the ball. That's, that's kind of what I was I was referring to before the game. It's good to see them. And if you want to know what kind of player Noah love lady is, he's a returning tackler from a year ago, but he caught that ball two plays ago and uh, had one guy to beat, and he just kind of ran right at him and lowered his shoulder and, and took him as far as he could. Second down and goal for the Eagles. Inside the Randall's fine meat red zone. They're going to toss this one to Strickland. Strickland's got blockers, two, one, touchdown. Washita Christian as Chad Strickland is going to take it in from seven yards out and add to the Eagle lead. That Eagle touchdown brought to you by the fine folks at Trinity Diamonds Direct. And that was great blocking by our offensive line. I, I watched uh, Chad race into the end zone, and it looked like there were already about eight people uh, towards where he was going, and I see all the numbers. It's 50-something. It's 60-something. Our offensive line is getting downfield and, and just, uh, you know, making a path for Chad to, uh, to get in the end zone with his speed. Sam Harrell on to attempt the extra point. Tate Hamby with a good hold. Harrell's kick is up, and it looks good and is. As the Washita Christian Eagles are going to add to their lead. 21 now, 21 to nothing. Let's go down to the sideline and check in with Stan Humphreys with the Marion State Bank sideline report. Stan, how the Eagles look down there? Well, guys, like you were just talking about, uh, the offensive line had their guys blocked all the way into the end zone, so Chad could just take it straight into the end zone. But just a toss sweep, get outside, a little bunch set. Um, but looking good, looking sharp, and that pass earlier from from Landon, just, I mean, right on the money. The coverage was not bad. Just put it over his uh, outside shoulder, and uh, it's just a tough uh, tough duo to put up with. Absolutely. Thanks a lot, Stan. Stan, uh, tell me something. As you look over your shoulder, man, you're kind of down there around the uh, the student section here at Eagle Stadium. We got uh, what, we got a madhouse going on down there? Or? Well, yeah, there's the students, you know, up here for homecoming. They had a full day today. They're probably a little, little worn out from that today, but uh, I'm going to go up and visit with them in a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, see if we can't rile them up a little bit. <laughs> All right. Thanks. thanks a lot, Stan. Stan Humphreys with the Marion State Bank. Sideline report. Stan waving into the swamp. 
Harrell gets a nice high kick, but boy, he missed that one. As that one looks like it's going to travel out of bounds and does. Yep. Nice kick, great, uh, great uh, leg strength on it, but uh, it is going to travel out of bounds. It's going to be first down and ten for the Panthers at their own 35 yard line. David, I, I got, I got to tell you, if, if you're not watching the live stream, you know, just check it out just for a second in case we go back to Stan and check out his get up for the night. I mean, if he walks up in that student section, they, they may think he's going to ask him, you know, uh, uh, how, how many's in their party and what size table do they need? <laughs> well. Let's hope not. And, and, I, and I'm going to tell you, that might happen at the right in, in the parents section down here. But sporting that in the student section, no. You no. got a tuxedo T-shirt on. Exactly. So. That's what happened. I mean, you know, he's, he, I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. Well, I, you know what? He, here's the thing. He's the kind of guy, I guarantee you, Stan's going to find out what kind of real, what kind of greeting he gets as he, <laughs> as he makes his way into the student section. Probably on his way there now. It's going to be first down and 10 for the Panthers. They trail in this contest now 21 to nothing. A minute and 50 left to play here in the first quarter. Imaje Bethel is going to stand in the shotgun. Three receivers split wide to his right, two to his left. He looks to throw. He's going to put this one in the air. It's going to be intercepted. Going to be picked off that time for the Eagles by number 50, Colin Cork. Cork's got back. some running room. He's at the 10. He's at the 5, and he's going to be upended around the 3-4 yard line is where Cork will uh, will be uh, will be brought down. And uh, as a result, it's going to be first down to 10. Now, it looks like we may have a Panther shaken up on the play as uh, as we will uh, have a stoppage to check on him. Cork with a nice interception that time, and actually... 30 yards on the return. The Eagles will set up first down and 10. Uh, it looks like they're going to spot this inside the five at about the Panther two-yard line. We talked about Corp uh, this week or last week. I mean, he plays middle linebacker, so he's in the thick of everything. And, you know, you can't really tell what tackles he's always in on or which one he assists. I mean, you know, he's got good numbers, but, man, he's just had a really good year playing that middle linebacker spot, filling in. Um, you know, from, since the start of the season. And so he's played every, uh, you know, uh, meaningful defensive snap at middle linebacker for the Eagles. Absolutely. It's going to be first down and goal for the Eagles. Well, actually, it's going to be first down and goal for the Eagles at the four-yard line. But Sam Harrell is going to come out with Tate Hamby. And it looks like they're going to attempt another field goal as uh, they spot this football at about the four-yard line. So I'm going to have to wait for Donnie to do some quick math for me. But they are going to kick this one on first down. This one's going to be a 21-yard field goal attempt. And as a result, the Panthers are going to take a quick timeout. And we're not going to take a timeout. We're going to go down to the sideline and check in with Stan Humphreys with the Marion State Bank sideline report. Stan, how you doing tonight? I'm good, guys. We're here in the student section. Turn around and say hi to everybody back here. Hi, what's up? We're here for homecoming. They had a lot of great activities today for the students and here at the game. And uh, the student section's wild going on over here. About to score another touchdown, guys. All right. All right. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Stan. We see you guys from up here in the press box as well. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Stan Humphreys with the Marion State Bank sideline report. I'm going to tell you something else. Stan also has committed to some radio, another radio first. He says he's going to make his way down to the homecoming court. We might actually talk to a member of the homecoming court on the air. That might that happen cool. tonight. That would be cool. Oh, it would be very cool. Absolutely. We might talk to the queen. Oh, Jaden Ellerman. Hey, it could happen. Yeah, her it and could... Tristan Wiley have been a thing for a while. Hey. So, you know, they're a great couple. Hey. And uh, well, on stage together last night, as she received her crown for the 2021 homecoming queen. S I... Super great kid, too. Absolutely. Well, it's going to be first down and goal for the Eagles. Ball at the Panther four-yard line. Sam Harrell's going to come out to attempt a 21-yard field goal attempt. The kick's down, it's up, and he got it. He goes Wheelhouse. Down. Sam Harrell's going to put a, put a field goal on the board. First field goal so far tonight for the, or so far this season mm -hmm. for the Eagles, and Sam Harrell's going to be good from 21 yards out. Boy, you talk about confidence, huh? I mean, that's got to do it for you as uh, Harrell splits the uprights. You want to talk, you talked about it a little while ago. What's his range? You know, can he do it in a game? And he, 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 sh he missed one up wide left a little earlier. I think Donnie told me that one was from 33 yards out. Mm -hmm. And the one uh, that time from 21 is good. So the Eagles increase their lead now with a minute and 15 left to play in the, in the first quarter, 24 to nothing. I was, I was at practice yesterday and watching uh, extra teams. And I'd say Sam's good of just upwards of a 40-yarder. Like, you know, he's got the leg to get it there. Uh, and pretty consistent yesterday in practice. So 
Um, you know, it'd be nice actually to see him get one with a little more, you know, with a little more distance to it tonight. Um, I'm, I'm trying to look around and see if I see Spencer Elkins on the sideline tonight because, you know, uh, senior Spencer Elkins and Sam Harrell senior have been kind of splitting kicking duties, and I, I haven't seen him on the sidelines yet, so it may be all Sam Harrell tonight. Well, Sam's going to tee this one up at the 40-yard line. Panthers are going to send a couple of guys deep. Sam gets his, oh boy, I oh, tell wow. you, this one is going to travel way out of bounds. That may be up there with Stan. Well, okay, you know what? It would be up there with Stan if he was in the student section. He's not in the student section. No, he's anymore. not. No, he's not. Stan has oh, made he's his way up there. <laughs> Look at him. He has made his way down to the, uh, to, to the homecoming court area. And it looks like, uh, you know, well, I tell you what, why not? We should go down and talk to Stan right now. Stan Humphreys with the Marion State Bank sideline report. Stan? I got to tell you, man, I, this is a first. We've never talked to anybody on the homecoming court. Well, I don't know if I've ever moved that fast from here. <laughs> yeah, that was quick. Down there to this end, but I'm down here on the end with the homecoming court, guys, and you can see they're all excited about it. We're getting ready for halftime for the show to be put on. Absolutely. Uh, <laughs> you know, the game's going on, but, uh, you know, I'm going to stick down here with all these pretty ladies down here and have a good time watching the game and... Uh, uh, hopefully I don't make them late for halftime. Absolutely. <laughs> Smart man. Stan Humphreys with the Marion State Bank sideline report. Homecoming 2021 here at Washita Christian. First down and 10 for the Tensaw Panthers. They get a good snap from center. And this time they, they're going to go with a little bit different arrangement. They've been working in Maj Bethel at quarterback. This time they swap it up a little bit. It looked like Javier Thomas uh, taking a direct snap. Uh, different people but uh, a little bit of the same result as the Panthers are going to lose a yard on the play, and it's going to be second down and 11. Yeah, not a lot of running room there. Um, you know, our, our, in the trenches, our, our defensive line and linebackers uh, that are shooting in the gap are doing a, an outstanding job of, of eliminating any seams in the defense, any creases that uh, they can find running room in. So a loss of one yard right there. So uh, tense all. Uh, lining up, it looks like they're in a, uh, an eye formation here, Dave. I don't think they're going to get this playoff, Daniel. We've got two seconds left to go yep. before the yep. end of the first quarter, and that is going to bring it in to the first quarter of play. Washita Christian 24, the Tensaw Panthers 0. We're going to take a quick break here and invite you to come back and join us for the second quarter of tonight's contest. You're listening to Washita Christian Eagle football on 92.3, The Wolf. You can go a minute. You can. Yeah, yeah, I th it's kind of slow happening. Yeah, yeah. Tensaw is like. Fitzhugh Field, Washita Christian Eagle Stadium, the campus of Washita Christian School. Homecoming 2021 as the Washita Christian Eagles hosting the Ten Saw Panthers. Eagles uh, come out and uh, so far in this contest have done exactly what you need to when you're playing uh, a team that's not quite, maybe not quite, uh, you know, quite as, uh, well, quite as competitive as you are. So the Panthers... Uh well, the Eagles with a 24 to nothing lead. The Panthers with the football loss of one yard on the play. They've kind of substituted in and have picked up a uh, picked up a running back to uh, to direct snap these balls to, and that's number five, uh, Zadarian Bass. Bass is going to take this one on the direct snap, try to get to the corner. Actually, that time it's number three, uh, uh, Jaquan uh, Jaquan Gibson. Gibson gets to the edge, but unfortunately, he's going to be hauled down there. He's going to lose another yard. So now you're going to be looking at third down and 12 for the Panthers as they spot this at the Panther 33-yard line. That was number 15, junior Mason Minville, who kind of splits time on defense with Wiley at cornerback, and Minville with a good job stepping up. He, he laid a good hit 
on him, but didn't quite wrap up. So, uh, you know, I'd like to see that from Minville. He's a, a good athlete and, and can make some plays uh, on offense and defense. 11 minutes and three seconds left to play here in the second quarter. Washita Christian 24, Tinsaw 0. Play clock has not started, which is a little unusual. So the Panthers with uh, with a little time to get uh, to get their play together. Third down, 12 for the Panthers. Ball at their own 33-yard line. Direct snap is again going to go to number three. That's Jaquan Gibson, and Gibson is going to plow this thing straight ahead, and he's going to run into a bunch of eagles, and it's going to be no gain on the play. So it's going to bring up fourth down and 13 now for the Panthers. And it looks like they may actually decide to punt this football. Yep. Number 53 for Tensaw, Daniel Tyler Matthews handled the kicking That's chores, right. and it looks like he's dropping deep to punt this football. The Eagles aren't going to send anybody deep. So the Panthers will try to flip this field and uh, and pick up some field position. As they get set up, you know, that was sophomore Maddox King with the uh, – he kind of had the initial hit, wrapped up the legs of the ball carrier there, and we've seen Maddox – uh, you know he can't. He transferred to school here this year from from uh, Prairie View, and he, uh, you know, he's a good he's a good linebacker. Had a couple interceptions, and that was a really good tackle right there. Good snap from center. Matthews with a good line. kick. It's actually going to have some good height. Ooh. Unfortunately for the Panthers, it's going to take an eagle roll. <laughs> and uh, one of the Panthers, actually the uh, quarterback uh, from earlier, uh, Maje Bethel, is going to try and swat that one. But uh, unfortunately, it's uh, it's going to be it's going to rest where he touched it. Yeah. So the punt's going to cover 29 yards, no return, and the Eagles will uh, will take over on offense. First down and 10. Ball at their own 35-yard line. Eagles lead this contest 24 to nothing. Want to thank our sponsor for tonight's second quarter, DNH Sporting Goods. DNH Sporting Goods, two locations in Bastrop and Sterlington to serve you. Stop by DNH Sporting Goods for all your Washita Christian Eagle gear. I can I, I can speak for both of us when I say that you and I are not only uh, sponsor supporters of them, but we are customers. We are because, customers. Because uh, we love the gear that you can pick up uh, over at DNH Sporting Goods. First down and 10 for the Eagles. Ball at their own 37-yard line. Junior quarterback Landon Graves in the shotgun. Strickland joins him in the gun, turns, hands this one to Strickland, and he's got some running room. He's across the 45. Now he's, a, well, cut down just shy of midfield. Nice open field tackle that time by the Panthers, but it looks like it's going to be enough for a community pharmacy first down. A gain of 12 yards on the play. I look like number four, Daquan uh, Gibson. I'm assuming there's brothers. There's Jaquan and Daquan Gibson, and uh, so that was number four. Uh, Jaquan's number three, but that really was a good tackle. Chad looked like he was about to uh, to break off a big chunk of yards, but yeah, but Daquan able to grab him, grab him around the legs and bring him down. First down and ten for the Eagles. Ball at midfield. Graves in the shotgun. Strickland joins him in the gun. Two receivers to his right, one to his left. Eagles traveling from right to left on your radio dial. Gives this one to Strickland. Nice patient run by Chad as he lets his blockers get out in front of him. Crosses the 40, the 45 before he's upended. Now let's call it about... Uh, about the 32-yard line, a gain of 18 yards on the play, and again, more than enough for another community pharmacy first down. Yeah, that was left guard, Avery Pilgreen right there just leading the way. Uh, Chad, Chad told me, you know, he enjoys it, and the, the linemen tell me when they, they feel Chad's hand on their back, and so that's what Avery likes to do, getting downfield 15, 20 yards, you know, still blocking and, and trying, trying to allow Chad to pick up some, uh, some yards, or the Eagle offense to pick up yards. First down and 10 for the Eagles. Ball at the Panther 33. Graves in the shotgun. Strickland in, him with, in the gun with him. Two receivers left, two to his right. Low snap from center. Quick throw to Culp. Culp's going to make one man miss. He's at the 20. Now he's at the 15, inside the 10, before he's run out of bounds. But a nice catch that time by Culp. And I'll tell you one thing, too. <laughs> well, you do get to see Tristan Wiley run. And when Tristan opens up, it's fast. But, boy, quick feet, nice moves that time by Culp. Gain of 28 yards inside the Randall's Fine Meat Red Zone with another community pharmacy for First down. Culp is shifty. Uh, you know, I'd say uh, in traffic, he, he, he's really good at getting yards uh, after the catch. And that was that RPO that we saw where uh, the Eagles bring out against St. Fred's that they, they had a tough time getting going, but they obviously pra practiced it. That looked nice. First down and goal for the Eagles at the Panther nine-yard line. Graves in the shotgun, calls for the ball. Good snap. Looks to oh. throw and does. This is going to be complete out in the flat. That's going to be number 11, Zach White on the reception. White is going to run 
through one Panther defender, make another one miss, and go in for the touchdown. Yeah, nice catch and run by Zach White. And uh, Zach White and Noah Lovelady have a similar uh, running style, playing style. You know, Zach White does not mind the contact. He invites the contact. And uh, there he gets it from two or three. And, uh, you know, it's almost like he has a point to prove when he has the ball in his hands. Great run after the catch. White takes it in for the Eagles. Another kind of stoppage of play. The helmet, uh, looks like somebody has the helmet off. Okay. All right, so here's the thing. You know, you, you've, uh, we, we've, uh, we, well, I, I found him. Okay. I found him again. Stan Humphreys is now again settled in. When he told us that he was thinking about hanging out, um, you know, in the homecoming court area tonight. He's been true to his word. Yes, yeah. He hasn't moved from that spot. Mm. He's still there. We're going to have to go down and catch up with him here in just a minute after Sam Harrell attempts this extra point. The homecoming girls better be ready because Harrell could kick. Well, I know uh -oh, he's going to uh -oh. scorch him. He goes way over. Yeah, they were about the to clear out, though. <laughs> over the homecoming court as he adds to the Eagle lead now. 30 to, to zero. And let's go down to the end zone and check in with Stan Humphreys. And tonight, instead of saying Stan Humphreys and the Marion State Bank sideline report, it's going to be Stan Humphreys and the Marion State Bank end zone report mm -hmm. as we go down to check in with Stan. Stan, how you doing down there? Well, guys, I don't know if you saw it or not, but there was a lot of them back here. They stood up. They were trying to catch that ball then. It kind of went over their head on the back of the track back here, but, uh, you know, I think there's, uh, there's so many of them down here that are uh, multiple uh, sport athletes down here that uh, yep. they could have handled it. Probably uh, could have handled it a little better than some others. Oh. <laughs> yeah, you got a pretty good team down there with those girls that are assembled for the homecoming court this year, whatever sport you go into. Uh, yeah, I'll take all these girls and go play anything you want to play. Yep. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Stan. Stan Humphreys with the Marion State Bank. Sideline report. Great to see Stan down there tonight having a good time with, uh, with the, uh, the lovely, uh, lovely young ladies making up the homecoming court for Washita Christian. Homecoming always a big event here at OCA and uh, continues uh, continues to be to this day. The football game that's going on sees the Eagles out in front of Tinsaw now, 31 to nothing. Sam Harrell will tee this one up at the 40-yard line. Sam's been kicking the ball hard, but unfortunately unable to keep it between the hashes. This one's going to be a pooch kick. And, boy, this pooch kick is going to travel out of bounds at about the 40-yard line. I'm not sure on kicks, but they may be able to actually take the kick Spot. where it goes out of bounds. And if that's the case, well, it looks like it could be either way about the 35-yard yeah. line. So, you know, I've seen Sam kick for a long time, and I, I will tell you this. Some of those earlier kicks that were traveling out of bounds, I don't think that was intentional. In that in that case, I mean, does he try to, is he trying to just kick it out of bounds to get the I, ball spotted at the 35? I don't I, know. I don't know. Uh, it it kind of looked like that. You know, he took a one-step drop on his on his kick. I mean, just stepped up, and he, it looked like he tried to kick it out right at the – uh, the 35-yard line, but hey, if that's what he was trying to do, he, he did it. So. Absolutely. Well, it's going to bring up first down and 10 for the Panthers, and I mean, you know, it looks, in, in all fairness, they're going to spot it at exactly the 35-yard line. So either either Sam is unbelievably talented, or he got a lucky break he's good. there. He's good, but you know, like you mentioned, though, the other one was out of bounds unintentionally. I just, I just not sure about that one. I'm not sure either, but we're going to, hey, you know what, let's just say he meant to kick it yeah. out of bounds. So it's first down and 10 for the Panthers. Ball at their own 35-yard line. Six minutes left to play in uh -oh. the half, and this one is going to sail right into the hands of Drew Vadreen. I thought he was a quarterback. That was a pretty good catch there. It wasn't bad. It wasn't bad. Definitely hung on to it. So it, uh, it's going to be incomplete. It's going to bring up now second down and 10 for Tensaw. Ball at their own 35-yard line. Eagles starting defense uh, still on the field, um, including Mason Mimbo in. So Tristan Wiley's not out there on the field right now, but it looks like uh, – all the other uh, all the other defensive players are still your your first your first stringers your starters. Second down and ten for Tensaw. Ball at their own 35 yard line. Looks like the Panthers. You know I'm not sure why, but they you know with the game clock or the play clock off, and I'm not sure why we're not running the play clock, but uh, they they do seem to be letting a lot of this time run off. So it's second down and ten for Tensaw, and one of the Panthers mm -hmm. gotten a little bit. Too big of a hurry, and that's going to cost Tensaw five yards, and it's going to bring up second down now and 15. Yeah, that was a tight end, number 11. Um, his last name is Washington. Um, but I, I'm not trying to call him out, but I'm looking at him, and he looks like he's about 6'4 or 6'5 or out there. He's a tall kid, you know, looks like a, a good athlete. Second down and 15 for the Panthers. Ball now 
at the Panther 30-yard line. Four minutes and 54 seconds left to play. Washita Christian 31, Tensaw 0. Quarterback in this formation for the Panthers is going to be number 15. And that's Amaj a Bethel. And Bethel is going to let this one sail over the head of his intended receiver. And it's going to bring up now third down and 15. Yeah, looking for a number five pass on the on the pass there. But uh, ball just, just sailed over his head uh, harmlessly uh, to the turf. Um, bring up third long for uh, for the Tensaw Panthers here. Um, you know, I, Fitch, Coach Fitch, you talked about it before the game. You know, he wants his, he wants his defense to get used to, to looking for turnovers, opportunities for turnovers. And... Um, and I imagine that's kind of uh, their message out there on the field right now. They're trying to find an opportunity to intercept one or, or scoop up a fumble. Third down and 15. Ball at the Panther 30. Bethel looks to throw. Throws this one in the air. Goes in and out of the hands of an Eagle defender. Couldn't make out who that one was that time, Daniel. But it's going to bring up fourth down. That was uh, Cork. On. Yeah, that was number 50, Colin Cork again, getting his hands on it. Not, not able to hold it on, but Cork with uh, interception earlier in the game being at the right right place at the right time and you know that's what we talk about when we talk about Colin Cork is he's always around the ball wherever the ball goes you, you can look for number 50 and he'll be close by fourth down and 15 for Tensaw out to handle the punting chores is Tyler Matthews Matthews with a pretty good punt last time and no return for the Eagles as it looks like the Eagles will set up and punt safe as well with uh, with nobody deep and again I think the Eagles uh Daniel, just trying to work the offense a little bit tonight to uh, to make sure they stay sharp. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, number 34, Aiden Eldridge, Eldridge just checked in at safety. And, uh, he, oh, that's straight up. That one is going to be a little bit different. But in this case, well, now it checks yeah. up and uh, <laughs> checks up and takes an eagle roll. But uh, Matthew's unfortunately kicking uh, kicking that one pretty high, but just not very far as we'll wait on Donnie's, uh, Donnie's tally. But punt's going to cover 17 yards with no return. So it's going to be... So it's going to be first down and 10 for the Eagles. They'll put this football just inside Panther territory at the uh, the Tensaw 48-yard line. You know, I mentioned the first-team defense was out there on the last possession. The first-team offense is still out here, and it uh, looks like uh, offensive line, um, Barm White at tight end. Yeah, it looks like all, all of our starters are out here on the field with Strickland in the backfield. Well, I'll tell you what, it's homecoming tonight. Yeah, man. Here at o here at Washita Christian, a pretty familiar face around here. As I'm looking down at the sideline, I'm seeing Stan Humphreys talking to a guy who played a little ball here at Washita Christian. we got to check in on this guy. Stan, who are you down there talking to? Uh, I'm just down here talking a little football with uh, Saul Gray's, uh, uh, just kind of watching a little bit of the game here and uh, saw um, Landon there with the incomplete pass. But, uh, you know, you get two quarterbacks together, they're going to talk ball. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Absolutely. Stan, great job tonight, man. I, don't, I know we've, I know Coach Fadreen would have never made his way down there to, uh, to check in on the homecoming court here at, uh, at Washington Talk Christian. Well, he might have done the homecoming court and then the next game at home he'd have made it to the students. <laughs> That's right, yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Thanks a lot, Stan. Stan Humphreys with the Marion State Bank sideline report. Second down and 10 for the Eagles. Graves looks to throw. He's going to pull this one down, steps up in the pocket. has got a man down field. That's number three, Tristan Wiley. And I'm going to tell you something. Really good coverage that time by number five, Zadarian Bass, as Bass was running stride for stride with Tristan Wiley and made a nice play on the football, knocks it down. The Eagles are going to have to get something done here on third down to keep this drive alive. Well, I got to say, you know, um, we talk about Tristan's speed. He's fast. Like you mentioned, he was step for step with him, and I think Landon kind of was locked on to him, uh, you know, at the onset, trying, trying to get one over the top there. But, man, that was good coverage right there. Look how, how deep they're playing. Oh, here they go. They're, they were getting uh, co coached over there. Third down and 10 for the Eagles. Wiley going to come in motion across the formation. Graves in the shotgun. Good snap from center. Landon with plenty of time to throw and does. He fires this one out to Culp. Culp's going to need to get up field in a hurry to pick up this first down, and he will. Oh, now he's going to lose the football. Out. And the Panthers are going to recover this one. And they're going to recover it. It looks like they'll they'll pick it up in Panther territory. It'll be first down and 10. It looks like at about their 46-yard line. A nice throw and completion out in the flat to Culp. Unfortunately, he's going to get stripped after the catch. And uh, the Panthers will take over here at their own 46-yard line. First down and 10. Two minutes left to play here in the first half. 
Panthers trailing the Eagles 31 to nothing. We mentioned the shiftiness of Culp, and uh, he just kind of had, had a one-on-two match up there, and, uh, you know, he, he just, I think he got the ball punched out, or he tried to get for the next yards, and it just kind of kind of bounced out. But, you know, he, he was trying to, trying to break a tackle there and get into the end zone. First down and 10 for the Panthers. And it looks like Tensaw is going to take a quick timeout. We're going to take a quick timeout with him. You're listening to Washita Christian Eagle Football on 92 3, the Wolf. Washita Christian 31, Tensaw 0. Eagle Stadium, the campus of Washita Christian School Homecoming, 2021. Washita Christian 31, Tensaw 0. The Panthers are going to take over following a Thomas Cole fumble. First down at 10 for Tensaw, ball at their own 36 yard line. Bethel, the quarterback for the Panthers, is going to unload. He's got a man downfield, and that's going to be swatted down. Nice coverage that time for the Eagles by number 15, Mason Menville, and uh, it's going to be incomplete. I tell you what, it looked like Mason was spiking a ball, man, out at the beach on that time. Took a big wind up to knock it down, and uh, it is going to be incomplete. Good coverage out there in the flat, and it's going to bring up second down and 10 for the Panthers. That's the right play right there, though, if you're a defensive back and, and the guy's got position on you. Uh, you know, um, the tensile receiver was in front of him and so he wanted to make sure he didn't catch the ball because if he catches it you know and, and he misses the tackle there's no help uh, behind you so nice job by Menville there. Second down and 10 for the Panthers. Ball at their own 36 yard line. Minute 39 seconds left to play here in the second quarter. Eagles on top 31 to nothing. Bethel calls for the ball, looks to throw. He's going to put a lot of air under this one, and that was going to be intercepted by Culp. Culp's going to take this one back across the 35. Now he's going to go across the 40 and down to around the 45-yard line before he's ran out of bounds on the far side of the field. So Culp, well, you know what? He put it on the ground. Now he goes up and gets it back to give, uh, to give the Eagles uh, another shot to put some points on the board here before the end of the first half. Minute 25 seconds left to play. Culp that time with a 14-yard return. Gives the Eagles pretty nice field position. Now it's going to be first down and 10. Ball at the Eagle 45-yard line. Nice to see a little redemption there. And that was a good interception and good return yards that he earned there. First down and 10 for Washita Christian. Ball at their own 45. Landon Graves is going to bring the Eagles out. He's got two receivers. To his left, the Eagles traveling from right to left on your radio dial. Two right and two left. Lone running back with him in the backfield is Strickland. Graves in the gun. Calls for the ball. Low snap from center. Pulls it in. Sets his feet. Puts this one in the air. Going to be looking for Culp over here in the flat. And I'm not sure if that was uh, just a high ball and maybe a little miscommunication on the route. But uh, either way, it's going to be incomplete. Bring up second down and 10 for the Eagles. Interesting formation there. One of the receivers um, kind of in the slot on the far side of the field uh, was Chad Strickland, who's usually um, back there with Landon Graves in the, in the backfield. And, and Zach White was actually at the running back position and, uh, and Chad at the, uh, at the slot receiver spot. Now they're going to swap places. Second down, 10 for the Eagles. Ball at their own 45-yard line. Strickland. Joins Graves in the gun. Going to throw this one out in the flat to Strickland. Strickland's going to bring this one in. 
And he's going to get wrapped up by a couple of Panther defenders. Maybe got back to the line of scrimmage a little more. Donnie gives him two yards, and so will we. So it's going to bring up another third down and eight here for the Eagles. This Tensop Panther defense, man, playing a little bit tougher as we get close to the end of the third of the second quarter. A minute left to play on the on the game clock. Eagles find themselves with a third down and seven. Graves in the shotgun. Three receivers to his right, one to his left. That one is Tristan Wiley. Good snap from center. Landon looks to throw. Sets his feet and fires this one across to Culp. Culp with a nice catch, and he's going to be brought down, but he's going to have more than enough for a community pharmacy first down as uh, Culp picks up uh, what well, looked like about 13 or 14 yards. Actually, Donnie's going to give him 11, so it's going to be enough for another community pharmacy first down, and Coach Steven Fitzhugh is going to call his first time out of the night. Let's go down to the sideline, I guess, and check in with Stan Humphreys with the Marion State Bank sideline report. How's it going down there, Stan? Well, guys, give us a chance here to work a little bit of your two-minute offense. Uh, call a timeout there for, uh, uh, got the ball in the 41 going in to, uh, you know, Coach Vadreen looking at uh, seeing what his playbook he wants to uh, to pull out here. Uh, you know, I guess it's nice 31 to nothing up that uh, uh, Coach Fitzgerald, he's already over into the homecoming. Uh, he's going to walk, uh, walk his daughter at uh, halftime tonight so you're up 31 nothing you're able to do that as a coach absolutely thanks a lot Stan Stan one thing too that uh, you know that we've touched on I, I will say this boy the, the distribution of the football tonight it looks like we have found several different targets fullbacks running backs different receivers a lot of people getting their hands on the football tonight. well I, the thing I like about that guys is you get it on film and you allow other teams that we're gonna play in the future to realize hey it's not all about Tristan we had other guys that can run they can catch the football Ball. Absolutely. Thanks a lot, Stan. Stan Humphreys with the Marion State Bank sideline report. As uh, Stan mentions, Tristan, so will we as he hauls this one in inside the 30-yard line. That's going to be more than enough for a community pharmacy first down. A gain of 14 yards. Clock is going to stop at 28 seconds, and the Eagles will burn another timeout. We'll take this opportunity to thank the folks at Forsyth Avenue Church of Christ, longtime supporters of education for time and eternity here at Washita Christian Everyone invited to join us for worship at 10 a.m. Sunday mornings, 2101 Forsyth Avenue. Online at uh, FAC. Let me see. I can't. I, have, I always have a tough time with our FAC. FACOC.org. Uh, there you go. Yeah, man. <laughs> I got that. Okay. Right. You, all right. You're there. You got I it. I got it. Yeah. All right. We got a Wednesday, Wednesday <laughs> night Bible study that's uh, that's really great. And Sunday's at 10 a.m. Uh, with with a message by uh, by John Dobbs. John does a great job of uh, of sharing the gospel of Jesus Christ with uh, with everybody. And and when we invite you, when you and I invite somebody yeah. to church, we're talking about going to Forsyth because that's where you and I attend. And Daniel is actually the youth minister at Forsyth Avenue Church of Christ. Does a great job in his role. And uh, Forsyth Avenue, longtime sponsors of uh, Washita Christian Eagle Athletics. First down and 10 as the Eagles look to the air. Graves is going to throw this one, and it's going to be caught by Wiley as he'll go out of bounds. And it looks like they'll spot it at the 15-yard line inside the Randall's Fine Meat Red Zone with 23 seconds left to play here. Gain of 12 yards and enough for another community pharmacy first down. Yeah, a variety of players touching the ball that you mentioned. I think we've had six different targets, five different receivers, and uh, it's also uh, good to see a variety of routes there. That's uh, just a little out right there by Wiley to try to pick up the first down and and, and Stan mentioned it a, mi a minute ago you know this is our uh, our two-minute offense and uh, so we're trying to move the ball down the field and, and preserve time here in the first half first down of 10 for the Eagles Graves in the shotgun Strickland joins him Graves looks to throw sets his feet he fires this one out in the flat to Strickland Strickland's gonna go across the 15-yard line before he's brought down it looks like he dropped the football may have been down no indication that the Eagles are gonna have to get something going here don't know if we got any timeouts remaining but it is going to bring up second down, and it, we do, and Coach Fitzhugh is going to burn one as it's going to be, uh, well, let's call it second down and nine as they spot this football inside the Randall's Fine Meat Red Zone at the Panther, well, I'll call it 14, yard line. Well, a number of things happened on that play. Chad kind of let the ball get in on his body, and so it was kind of up on his shoulder, so he hauled it in. As soon as he secured it, there was a guy coming after him. He tried to plant his foot and, and cut it upfield and lost his footing, and uh, when he hit the ground, it looked like the white hat ruled him down, So, and I, th I think he was, but when he tried to cut it, when he fell down, uh, he hit the ground, the ball just kind of kind of popped out, so uh, offensive coordinator Drew Verdreen wisely taking a timeout, trying to get this offense on track uh, for one more score with 12 
seconds to go here uh, in the first half. 12 seconds remaining here in the first half. Tell you what, man, you got a you got a set of alumni cheerleaders down there, and it is awesome. Hey, hadn't lost awesome. a step, man. I saw them today at the pep rally. Haven't lost a step. That's what I'm talking about. That is what I'm talking about. Great to see people here uh, at homecoming. And I think you 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 said it best earlier. Renewing some relationships. Yeah, yeah. And just kind of reconnecting, connecting, reconnecting. Absolutely. Well, here we go. We're going to speak of connections. It's second down and nine. Ball at the Panther 14-yard line. 12 seconds left to play here in the first half. Graves in the shotgun. Good snap from center. Oh. Sets his feet. He's got plenty of time. He's got Wiley in the yeah. corner of the end zone. Touchdown! Washita Christian. Touchdown was good from 14 yards out. You and I have talked about the fact that Tristan Wiley is a good wide receiver, and I guarantee you, he is. Boy, I don't, I'm telling you, I could have caught that pass. I mean, that thing was a frozen rope to the corner of the end zone. A beautiful pass and a nice catch by Wiley as he puts another touchdown on the board with, uh, well, that's going to be the last play of the first half of tonight's contest. It's going to result in a touchdown for the Eagles. Sam Harrell is going to come on to attempt the extra point. Tate Hamby's going to hold it. A good job by taking his hands into that one. Kick is up. Oh, boy, it was ugly. Oh, it was good. Oh, oh. <laughs> oh. Well, the, the homecoming court is cleared out, thank goodness, because that, that kick hit one of the columns, and we saw a domino effect. Uh -oh. About three or four columns went uh, toppling down, so thank goodness those girls are safe. Absolutely. I th you know, and, and to agree with Stan, I think probably one of those oh. girls probably would have got caught the ball. At least evaded it. They're quick. Absolutely. Well, the Eagles are going to put an extra point on the board to, uh, to end the first half of play, and I think it's going to make it 38 to, uh, to zero here at Eagle Stadium. Well, I think the Eagles wanted to come out and do some things in the first half, and they were able to. We're going to go down to the sideline and check in with Stan Humphreys right before halftime. Stan, how you doing down there? Good, guys. I'm glad that the uh, homecoming court was on the other side of the field getting ready for halftime. It might have been a uh, domino effect and uh, knocked out a few of those uh, girls down there, but uh, no, it was a good first half. Uh, got a seat here. Going to watch the uh, homecoming presentation and enjoy that. Absolutely. Thanks a lot, Stan. Stan Humphreys. For the Marion State Bank sideline report. The Washita Christian Eagles are going to take it to the house with a 38 to nothing lead here at halftime. I want to thank everybody for tuning into the Ster Sterlington Physical Therapy halftime show. And uh, Sterlington Physical Therapy located at 8649 Highway 165 North. Call Craig today, 235 9326 to set up your appointment. Got some uh, got some alumni cheerleaders, man. You told me that they had it going on at, uh, the, at, the, at the school. I'm getting to see it firsthand. These, yeah. these young ladies hadn't missed a step, man. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I think some of them are pretty recent graduates. I see uh, one, of, one of my students uh, for the first year I got here, Mackenzie Strickland, brother of uh, our sister of Chad and Jay Strickland. And so she's out there in the center kind of captaining this uh, alumni group. And then you got your uh, some of your varsity cheerleaders on the, on the back row there. So so, man, they, got, they do. They're in sync and everything. <laughs> That's a great job. I think this, uh, the cheerleader sponsor uh, here at Watch Talk Christian is, uh, is Anissa. Uh, Anissa Morris at the time that I went to school with her, and I know Anissa does such a great job with our cheerleaders every year. And Anissa's out there she's with out them, there, man, yeah. slinging pom-poms. Uh, she's making sure they don't misstep. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, the ultimate taskmaster. Yeah. <laughs> well, the Eagles uh, take a 38-0 uh, to nothing halftime lead in here at Fitzhugh Field. Eagles State and uh, we're gonna we're gonna take a break from uh, from here at Eagle Stadium I think we've got the scoreboard show in effect tonight we're gonna let John take you through that and uh, come back and join us for the second half of play here at Fitzhugh Field Eagle Stadium homecoming 2021 for the Washington Christian Eagles you're listening to Eagle football on 92.3 
Our second freshman maid is Lindley Loveland. Lindley is the daughter of Billy and alumni Lindy Loveland. Lindley has attended OCS for 12 years. She attends Whites Ferry Road Church. The varsity cheerleader, basketball, and softball player is escorted by her father, Billy Loveland. Freshman maid, Lindley Loveland. Our final freshman maid is Katie Woodward. Katie is the daughter of Robbie and alumni, Sandy Woodward. Katie has attended OCS for 12 years. She attends Jackson Street Church of Christ. The basketball player is escorted by her father, Robbie Woodward. Freshman, Katie Woodward. Our first sophomore maid is Darcy Edgar. Darcy is the daughter of alumni Dan and Lori Edgar. Darcy has attended OCS for 13 years. She attends North Monroe Baptist Church. The varsity cheerleader, basketball player, and member of the track team is escorted by her father, Dan Edgar. Sophomore maid, Darcy Edgar. Our second sophomore maid is Isabella Fulmer. Isabella is the daughter of alumni Roger and Melanie Fulmer. Isabella has attended OCS for 12 years. She attends North Monroe Baptist Church. The varsity cheerleader and softball player is escorted by her father, Roger Fulmer. Sophomore maid, Isabella Fulmer. Our final sophomore maid is Madison Gibson. Madison is the daughter of Wes and Cindy Gibson. Madison has attended OCS for 11 years. She attends North Monroe Baptist Church. The varsity cheerleader, basketball player, and member of the track team is escorted by her father, Wes Gibson. Sophomore maid, Madison Gibson. Our first junior maid is Aiden Antley. Aiden is the daughter of Robert Antley and Kena Luffy. Aiden has attended OCS for 15 years. She attends North Monroe Baptist Church. The junior softball and soccer player is escorted by her father, Robert Antley. Junior maid, Aiden Antley. Our next junior maid is Ellie Kate Fitzhugh. Ellie Kate is the daughter of Stephen and Jenna Fitzhugh. Ellie Kate has attended OCS for 15 years. She attends Jackson Street Church of Christ. The varsity basketball player and member of the track team is escorted by her father, Stephen Fitzhugh. Junior maid, Ellie Kate Fitzhugh. Our next junior maid is Marissa Gibson. Marissa is the daughter of Wes and Cindy Gibson. Marissa has attended OCS for 12 years. She attends North Monroe Baptist Church. The varsity cheerleader, soccer player, and member of the track team is escorted by her father, Wes Gibson. Junior maid, Marissa Gibson. Our final junior maid is Annadelle Melton. Annadelle is the daughter of alumni Stuart and Jennifer Melton. 
Ed Adele has attended OCS for 13 years. She attends North Monroe Baptist Church. The varsity basketball player and member of the track team is escorted by her father, Stuart Melton. Junior maid, Annadelle Melton. Our first senior maid is Avery Hopkins. Avery is the daughter of alumni Brian and Molly Hopkins. The varsity basketball player is described as, Avery is a joy to teach. Her enthusiasm for the people and things she loves is contagious and I am thankful to have her this year. I remember her parents dating in high school when we were all students at OCS. So her bright smile is a daily reminder of things I find myself telling all my students. Be smart about who you date, and OCS will always be your family. That's from Ms. Ziegler. Avery has attended OCS for 14 years. She attends North Monroe Baptist Church. Avery's favorite scripture comes from Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through him who gives me strength. Avery is escorted by her father, Brian Hopkins. Senior maid, Avery Hopkins. Our next senior maid is Hannah Jones. Hannah is the daughter of Latricia Jones. The senior choir member is described as, Hannah lives and breathes Jesus. Her commitment to Christ and her diligence to help her friends do the same is truly a beautiful sight to see. She is a natural leader and a wonderful addition to everything she does. I look forward to seeing how God will use her in the years to come. That's from Miss Jenny Vincent. Hannah has attended OCS for six years. She attends First Baptist Church of Ravel. Hannah's favorite scripture comes from Psalms 91.2. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Hannah is escorted by her mother, Latricia Jones. Senior maid, Hannah Jones. Our next senior maid is Larkin Morris. Larkin is the daughter of Jeffrey and Jennifer Morris. The varsity basketball player is described as, having known Larkin since she was a little girl, the last four years have been very special to me. Jamie and I love that sweet smile and great attitude and gentle heart. Her servant attitude and friendly demeanor are the heart and soul of our team. Larkin is very special, and her heart will take her far in this world. The world needs more Larkins. That's from Coach Bobby Stokes. Larkin has attended OCS for 15 years. She attends First United Methodist Church. Larkin's favorite scripture comes from Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Larkin is escorted by her father, Jeffrey Morris. Senior maid, Larkin Morris. Our final senior maid is Sarah Shivers. Sarah is the daughter of James and Cindy Shivers. The senior vas varsity basketball player and softball player and member of the track team is described as the first thing you notice about Sarah is her sweet smile and contagious laugh. Sarah doesn't crave the spotlight, but thrives in quiet humility and teamwork. She's competitive, but never puts others down. I hold Sarah up as a role model for my granddaughters. Her unassuming ways, her desire to succeed in court and the field and the classroom and her kind, gentle nature makes Sarah the real deal. That's from Ms. Stokes. Sarah's attended OCS for 13 years. She attends First United Methodist Church. Sarah's favorite scripture comes from Isaiah 41.10. So do not fear, for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. Sarah's escorted by her father, James Shivers. Senior maid, Sarah Shivers. Our returning queen is Peyton Lindstrom. Peyton is a freshman at the University of Louisiana at Monroe, majoring in elementary education. She is the daughter of Mark and Cindy Lindstrom. The former OCS cheerleader and varsity soccer player attends First Baptist Monroe. Peyton is escorted by her father, Mark Lindstrom.
Returning queen, Peyton Lindstrom. And now our 2021 homecoming queen, Miss Jaden Ellerman. Jaden is the daughter of Jay and Patty Ellerman. The varsity basketball, tra basketball and track player is described as your beauty radiates the beauty of Christ who, serve, who you serve passionately. That passion is also seen in the classroom as you pursue excellence in the stands cheering for others and on the basketball court as you lead by example. You are so responsible and hardworking, so tender-hearted and compassionate, so gracious and creative. It has been a joy watching God's plan unfold as you've grown in grace and boldly pursued his calling on your life. He's given you a spirit of joy, a heart of compassion, a love of worship, a resolve to do the right thing, a selfish de selfless desire to invest in others, and an eagerness to use all your gifts in a way that honors him. Thank you for being a shining example of Christ. You're a true gift to all who know you. May his name be magnified through every facet of your life. That's for Miss Brazier. Jaden has attended OCS for 15 years. She attends Alto Baptist Church. Jaden's favorite scripture comes from Jeremiah 29:11. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. Jaden is escorted by her father, Jay Ellerman. Our homecoming queen, Jaden Ellerman. Tonight's attendees are Daphne Benson, Anna Sterling Edwards, Reese Sistrunk, Corey Parker, Callan Parker, and Thomas Rippon. They attend kindergarten at OCS. Daphne is the daughter of alumni Matt and Jenny Benson. Anna Sterling is the daughter of alumni Eric and Mary Catherine Edwards. Reese is the daughter of alumni Brandon and Emily Sistrunk. Corey and Callan are the sons of alumni Bradley and Kristen Parker. Thomas is the son of alumni Mitch and Catherine Rippon. They are escorted by headmaster Bobby Stokes. One more round of applause for our 2021 homecoming court. A special thanks to North Monroe Baptist Church, Nukes, Sunny Panzicos, Marion State Bank, Sharon Moore, Grace Burke, Amy Williams, Tiffany Albritton, Micah Harper, Brandon McQuillan, Anissa Morris, Aaron Stokes, Cooper Russell, and Carter Russell for all of their hard work. One last round of applause for the 2021 homecoming court.
Yeah. And, and, and like you said, I will tell you this, uh, you've been out here at the school for, for, for several years yeah. now, yeah. but I will tell you this, it's never changed. They do homecoming big. They did yeah. it back in the 80s, they did it back in the 90s, and I can tell you, these uh, these guys, uh, they, 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 they do homecoming uh, homecoming pretty special. Well, I know Miss, uh, you know, Principal Mr. Stokes and, and uh, the administrator in the office, Miss Amy Williams, I mean, this is their this is their night. This is their time of year. This is their favorite thing to do of the year. That, that it looks like to me. So they've uh, they've had a busy week and they always do a great job with it. Well, I'll tell you what, man. They, they got a little recognition going out, uh, going on out at midfield right now, and that's a bunch of football players. I think it's 2011 state championship team. Is that, 2011 is it state championship team. No, that is not hostility at no, all. No, is it a possibility? Man. I think it could be. Yeah. Right? 20 years? I mean, 10 years right now? Yeah, 10 years. Holy smokes! Yeah, no, that's exactly what's going on out there right now. Recognizing, uh, recognizing the. Uh, the 2011 state championship team. Were you calling those games for that for that team? Yeah, yeah, I did. I believe, uh, I believe if we, yeah, yeah, I know exactly who that is. Holy smokes! Yeah, and uh, there's, they're actually recognizing the full team, and I'm, I'm trying to, I'm looking down there to see some of those guys, and they're, no, they're not down there. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're going down to the whole roster, aren't they? Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. That's good. Absolutely, it's a great, uh, great football team. A lot of talented guys, and as a matter of fact, they had the alumni seven on seven tournament today. Something that Coach Fitzhugh does out here at uh, at Washington Chris. I don't think a lot of other teams in this area do it, but he invites any and all comers. I yeah. mean, it doesn't matter how old you are, how young you are. I mean, if you if you went to Washington Christian, you graduated from Washington Christian, and you were an Eagle football player, you are eligible. You get an open invite, and you can come out here. And uh, they do it. Uh, they do it the night of the homecoming contest. Unfortunately, now I will tell you this, as a member of, of a winning team uh -huh. and yeah two years ago we did win okay my, my team did uh it uh, it feels pretty good um and uh, i've been on the losing end as well it's not quite as satisfying but i will say this it is unbelievably cool to uh to see how much steven does at homecoming we say homecoming big yeah i mean how many people invite uh, the alumni to come back and play a full seven on seven tournament well i i, I got back out here today um and and it starts at three o'clock, and and they were out here doing it, and I didn't I didn't have time to watch it, but um, after it was over, I was bringing some stuff up here to the uh, to the press box, and I saw they have a little hospitality tent for uh, the alumni down here on the end zone, and it's got Chris, you know, these these like lawn lights, Christmas lights up, and there were several people gathered around it. I did see I did see somebody on uh, some crutches though. I, I don't know if they came with the crutches, but they they left with the crutches. So um, I don't I don't think they uh, I think it's a competitive game. I'm I mean, from what you've told me and, and uh, no it's it's highly competitive <laughs> and yeah crutches are, are nothing new. i mean i honestly i think saw a lot of sponsored the thing you yeah. know i mean with the with the, but I, I do think that uh i do think the guys love to come out and play and I, I'm, I'm being extremely sarcastic it uh it's it's not as serious as uh, as it could be, but I will say this: it's it's a blast. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you get to play with these guys that uh, you know they graduated six years ago, or 20 years ago, or 10 years ago, and it's it's neat, man. And uh, you you actually get down there on the field, and Coach Fitz, you takes everybody through it, and it's uh, it's neat. If you're listening to uh, to the broadcast, and you you know you, it, I'm just telling you, it's a neat experience, and it's it's something that uh, something that every every alumni and, and, and graduate of uh, of Washington Christian to play football all to come out and participate in. Now, you told me a story one time mm -hmm. about uh, Saul Graves, your former uh, broadcast partner. That's correct. Um, you know, kind of kind of told somebody, he says, hey, I, I'm going to be quarterback, you know, from, from this point forward, and, and we're going to try to win this thing. Yeah, that's so exactly that right. turned out? Absolutely. Well, I'll tell you what it was, and, I, and, I, and he, would, he, he, won't, he won't dispute it. We... We were playing and uh, we were having some trouble at the quarterback position, and he decided to come out of retirement and uh, and come out and throw. But later on, I found out that the reason he did was that he got to throw the ball to arguably one of the greatest wide receivers uh, out here in the school's history, in Jason Howard. But he never threw the ball to Mark uh, Mark Laird. And uh, Mark was on our team that day, and he said, you know what? That's something I want to do before I hang it up officially. Don't ever throw competitively again. I want to throw a touchdown pass to Mark Laird. And in all fairness, he threw three that day <laughs> to Mark Laird. So uh, it was uh, it was a lot of fun, man. And uh, it was a lot of fun to get to, uh, to to participate. And that's the thing I'm talking about. Saul Graves getting to throw to Mark Laird. Oh, yeah. Come on, man. Where are you going to see that every day? That's right. You know, it looks like our quarterbacks right now are out here uh, warming 
warming it up. Zach White and Landon Graves are, are throwing uh, on the sideline. Landon Graves is a pretty good quarterback in his own right. Absolutely. It, uh, and, and I will. I, I think I'm trying to see if I can find Stan down there somewhere. We're trying to go down to Stan Humphreys with the Marion State Bank sideline report. How you doing down there, Stan? I'm good, guys. I'm in the back of the end zone back here in the hospitality tent just enjoying myself. Uh, <laughs> if anybody can see me over here. Uh, oh, but just wait, waiting for the second half. You know, they had a uh, nice area set up over here for the uh, alumni to come back. So I'm making them my way around the whole stadium. Stan, you never did. did Southwood didn't have the uh, the the uh, the alumni seven on seven tournament. I'm assuming. Uh, not real sure. <laughs> I was too busy on Sundays to worry about it. Right. I, I, yeah. I, well, you know what? I'll I'll uh, I'll, I'll have to uh, I'll, I'll have to give you credit for that. That's uh, that's true. You were kind of tied up there for a few years. Not much time to go back for that, even though I did go back and play a lot of uh, slow pitch softball oh, games. Oh, nice. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, the one thing I was going to talk to you about, Stan, is, is you know, you and I, I know you've seen a lot more, you know, uh, quarterback play and pay a lot more attention to it than I have. And w what I will say is is tonight, some of the uh, some of the other throws last week and a few even before then, you know, we do have some talented wide receivers here, and we do have some guys that can, that can run with the football after the catch. But I will say that, uh, boy, I tell you, Landon's throwing the ball. It seems to me throwing the ball really really well tonight well I think you throws throwing the ball really really well the whole season you know what you got to understand and uh, when you play that position you throw the football some of the longer passes like that just on air sometimes is hard to complete much less have a defensive back running with them uh, or whatever and some of the throws he's made this year just to put it right on stride uh, and to, to make great plays like that uh, uh, he's got great touch uh, um, I think he we could, he could still keep working on his ability to maybe to read defenses um, and to spread the ball out like he is tonight. I like what I see tonight as far as getting everybody involved in the passing game to where the opposing team can't lock down on one guy. Um, and it really, I think, opens up our offense even more. Absolutely. Thanks a lot, Stan. Stan Humphreys with the Marion State Bank sideline report. Stan, enjoy the, uh, enjoy the alumni tent down there and, and all that it provides. As we get ready to start the second, and half of play here at Fitzhugh Field. Eagles Stadium, the Washita Christian Eagles uh, come out to start the second half of play here with a 38 to nothing lead over the Tensaw Panthers. And uh, Sam Harrell is teeing this one up at the 40 yard line. Not sure right now if we'll have a running clock here in the second half of play. Uh, I would assume that we probably will, but, uh, but it'll be interesting to see. Yeah, you got a nice, you got a fan right here, Dave, right in front of us. Uh, absolutely. She's, she's a cutie. She's about eight months old, and she's just staring at us. <laughs> so Sam Harrell's going to get his leg into this one, and this will travel out of bounds at about the 35. So oh, now we can say, now we can say beyond a shadow of a uh -huh. doubt that at least we know he was trying to kick that ball out of bounds earlier. And again, whoa, now they're going to catch him. Oh. They're going to walk this one off and say this one traveled out of bounds at about the 42-yard mm. line. And that's where the Panthers will start their first drive here in the second half of play. Yeah, now you're going to see, uh, start seeing uh, some players rotate in. Um, and that'll be good. They get to have their name called on the radio and get, get in the, um, you know, add, add some stats and, you know, in their accumulation of stats if they if they haven't gotten any so far. But, uh, you know, we've seen these. We've seen this um, this group of guys play a couple times this year, and I'll tell you what, man, they're not bad. You know, some of these uh, players that don't get, um, you know, the meaningful uh, snaps or the are the starting snaps of each game. No, the, uh, the and I will tell you this: this is uh, boy, there's a lot of fresh faces in there on the defense, and uh, boy, these young guys last week against uh, against Delta Charter as well as against River Oaks, uh, this is a stingy bunch of young guys, man. They do not like people to run the football. Yeah, well, they, I mean, you know, I talked about it last week. Like, uh, to them, these are these are big snaps. These are important snaps. This is live, full-speed uh, experience uh, that's going to come in handy, um, you know, in, in the future for a lot of these guys. Well, it's going to be first down and 10 for the Tinsaw Panthers as uh, we're hoping to wind this clock. 12 minutes left to play here, and they do in the third quarter. The Panthers will line up in the shotgun. That's going to be number 15, Imaje Bethel. 
Bethel's going to give this one off to number three. That's going to be Jaquan Gibson, and Gibson is going to have, he's going to find the corner on the far side of the field. It's going to be more than enough for a first down, a gain of 11 yards, 12 yards on the play. It's going to be first down and 10 for the Panthers. Nice burst of speed from uh, from Gibson there and uh, able, to, able to get to the outside and, and turn it upfield. Uh, trying to see who that was that forced him out of bounds. I'm thinking that maybe Trey Carr out there on the far side uh, that, that eventually forced him out of bounds. Ben Duvall, he's at middle linebacker, and we usually see him at, at defensive end or nose guard or, uh, you know, kind of like a rover uh, type pass rusher. But uh, he's in there commanding the defense from the middle linebacker position right here, which, which is kind of cool to see. Ben Duvall has, uh, has all the attributes yes. you like to see in a, in a defensive player and uh, probably going to have a pretty promising career here at Washington Christian. Again, the Panthers are going to keep this one on the ground. And this time that Eagle defense that I bragged on a little while ago is going to hold, get them back to the line of scrimmage. Actually, Donnie's going to say they lost a yard on the play. And that's going to bring up now second down and 11 for the Panthers as they spot this football in Eagle territory at the Eagle 47-yard line. Junior Mason Minville and sophomore Parker Payne in on the tackle. Uh, you know, Ben Duvall, his brother actually played at the University of Alabama uh, a few years ago for Coach Nick Saban. So, you know, he's got pedigree too. I mean, and you, and you look out there and you can see it, 6'2", you know, close to 200 pounds right now as a sophomore um, you know he can fill out and, and be a pretty dynamic player absolutely it's going to be second down now and 11 for the Panthers ball at the Eagle 47 yard line 10 minutes left to play here in the third quarter Washita Christian 38 Tensaw zero Panther quarterback Imaje Bethel will stand in the shotgun High snap from center. Bethel's going to lose this one. The Eagles are going to fall on it. Yeah, recovered by number 53, Landon Ogden there. Another sophomore um, fell on top of the ball there. Uh, but, yeah, that was just a snap. Popped off, off his hands, and uh, the uh, quarterback wasn't able to gather it. Well, so the Eagle defense is going to do its job. It's going to get the Panthers off the field. The Panthers are not going to put any points on the board. And I'll tell you something. I'll tell you, I'll tell you something else. This is the uh, this is the Washington Christian starting offense. It is. And uh, so it's going to be first down and ten. And I, I I'm recognizing uh, some linemen and some skill people. No, so all eleven of them. That, that's, that's your starting unit right there. The Landon Graves is going to stand at the at midfield, and uh, he's in the shotgun. Strickland joins him in the gun. Good snap from center. They're going to turn and hand this one to Strickland. Strickland's across across the 40. Now he's across the 35, the 30, across the 15 before he's run out of bounds Ooh. on the far side of the field. Going to go out of bounds at about the 15, and that's going to be more than enough for a community pharmacy first down. And depending on the spot, they are going to put this one inside the Randall's fine meat red zone at the Panther 15-yard line. So it's going to be first down and 10 for the Eagles at the 15. Gain of 30 yards on the play, and we've got a Tinsaw Panther shaking up on the play. Well, as they tend to him, that was a good run by, by Chad there. Uh, it was good to see some side-to-side -side movement, you know, to avoid some ta uh, tacklers and pick up uh, some extra yards. At the end of the run, though, he kind of lost his balance and fell close to the, the edge of the track. Um, you know, after a while, it wasn't a late hit or anything, but he just uh, <laughs> he ended up close to the track. But good run by Chad there. I will tell you, a little bit, uh, little bit interesting to me to see the Eagles starting offense out on the field for the second half of play. Coach Fitzhugh obviously feels like he needs to get a little more work before he lets those guys retire for the evening. But with a uh, with a 38 to uh, 38 to nothing lead, uh, a little surprised by that. Let's go down to the sideline and check in with Stan Humphreys at a Marion State Bank sideline report. Stan, how you doing down there? All right, guys. Just uh, glad that guy's up and walking off the field there uh, for Tensaw. But uh, down the sideline, close to the end zone, we got the ball on the 16-yard uh, line going in, and yeah, we got our first unit. Uh, back in there probably want to just see him come out of the locker room at halftime get back going maybe score a touchdown here and put some points on the board and then see some of these younger guys go in next absolutely thanks a lot stan stan humphreys with the marion state bank sideline report i wonder if that was uh offensive coordinator drew verdreen getting his offense back in there before uh Fitch, he was able to make it back from the homecoming festivities <laughs> <laughs> well and that, that's that's a distinct possibility but uh they're still on the field now and yep. he he Fitch is down there to put put uh, put some points on the board. 
First down and 10 for the Eagles inside the Randall's fine meat red zone at the Panther 15-yard line. Graves in the shotgun. Good snap from center. Looks to throw. Does. Fires this one complete. It's going to be number 13, Tate Hamby. And Hamby is going to make a nice catch uh, out in uh, out in the out in the, in the flat as he moves moves the ball forward. A gain of 11 yards on the play. But a uh, nice open field tackle by that time uh, by the Panthers. Is that's going to be more than enough for a community pharmacy first down. It's going to be first and goal at the four-yard line. Yeah, good catch by Tate there, and uh, like you mentioned, man, he got wrapped up pretty quickly there by a, a defender. Excellent open field tackling there by Tensaw. First down and goal for the Eagles. First drive here in the second quarter. Nice throw and a nice catch by Hamby. Set up the Eagles first and goal at the four. Graves in the shotgun. Strickland joins him in the gun. Two receivers to Landon's right, one to his left. Good snap from center, gives this one straight up to Strickland, and Strickland will take it in from four yards out. Another eagle touchdown, and that eagle touchdown brought to you by the fine folks at Trinity Diamonds Direct. That's Trinity Diamonds Direct. For all your diamond needs, visit their store located on Blanchard Street in West Monroe, Louisiana. Good run by Chad. I mean, he had a lot of room to run there. There's a pretty good sized hole to get through there to get in the end zone. So great job by the offensive line again. Uh, I think on that right side, um, I think James David Miller's over there, and uh, and let's see, uh, Casey Cobb's on the left. Um, Number 24, Grayson Smalling. Yeah, Grayson. He's going to be on to uh, extra point attempt. Boy, he hammered Ooh, that one. Yeah. And that's a big kick out of Grayson Smalling as he is going to pop that one through the uprights and put points on the board for the Eagles as they add to the lead now 45 to nothing. I'll tell you what, uh, Grayson Smalling with a little whip in that leg, brother. Is that, that that thing got through the uprights in a hurry. Nice kick. Yeah, he was one of, one of the ones out there kicking yesterday, and he, he can kick it pretty good. I did not see him kick, kick one that hard yesterday. He, he connected with that one. That was a, So you're saying he got juiced up for the game? Yeah, he, oh, no doubt. Yeah, that's his first attempt. That's his first career attempt, and he was jacked for it So and drilled it. So that was nice to see from Grayson. Grayson's a junior, a good player. Jack is a long snapper. He's our starting long snapper, too. We don't say his name very much. Well, I'll tell you what, he does a good job mm -hmm. on those, too, is uh, most most of, most of our long snaps, it seems like, uh, usually find their mark. Mm -hmm. Tate Hamby does a really good job of, uh, of uh, rounding those things up from time to time and, and getting them down. It looks like, to me, Smalling actually may be handling the kicking chores as well. Can't tell if that's Sam. No, that's no? Uh, Mason Minville. Well, Mason Minville. Man, I'm telling you, is there yep, anybody no. that can't kick? I mean, you know, they, they have they have <laughs> they have a lot of fun with it. You know, right before practice starts. Uh, but Mason actually handled some of the kicking duties, shared them early in the season when we were without Harold and Elkins uh, at the Southwood game. Uh, Minville was the one that handled the kicking duties that game. Well, he's going to handle them right now as he tees this one up at the 40-yard line. Hesitation. He's going to make his approach, and that's going to be a spinner. And unfortunately, it's going to travel out of bounds. Looks like it came off the side of his foot. So the uh, so the Panthers look like they'll start this drive first and ten at their own 35-yard line. Yeah, that one kind of had a uh, vertical spiral going on there, and uh, never good. You no, know, you know, he he hesitated as he approached the ball. I don't know. If, uh, I don't, you know, I don't know, I don't know what what could have possibly happened there, but he did hesitate, and that probably caused the the kick to, to have that weird spin and, and make his way out of bounds for the penalty. I've been watching football for a while now. I can, and one thing I can tell you, seeing a seeing a punt spin is a good thing. Yeah, yeah. Seeing a seeing a punt go end over end is not a good thing. By seeing a kickoff, kick off, yeah. <laughs> seeing a, a kickoff spin, not a good thing. They typically kind of go out of bounds in a hurry, as that one did. Mm -hmm. So it is going to be first down and ten for the Panthers. Four minutes or five minutes and forty seconds left to play here in the third quarter. Tonight's third quarter sponsor, Valerie Van Mathern, attorney at law, specializing in estate planning and secessions. Call Valerie today, 318-807-9030 to schedule your appointment. We want to thank Valerie Van Mathern, attorney at law, Valerie's longtime sponsor and supporter of Washita Christian Eagle Athletics. The Panthers try the right side of the Eagle defensive line. They find a soft spot in there, enough for a gain of one yard. It's going to bring up second down and nine for Tensaw with the ball at their own 36-yard line with five minutes left to play in the third quarter. Washita Christian 45, Tensaw zero. Nice tackle by, by John Turner there, number 35, John Turner. We thought his name uh, periodically throughout the season. When he's in, when he's in the game, he, he's around the ball. So uh, that, was, that was an excellent tackle as he... Uh, 
actually came from the other side of uh, playing linebacker. He went across, uh, you know, across the center and, and able to, to bring him down. Second down, nine for the Panthers. Number 15, Imaje Bethel gets a good snap from uh, from his center this time. He's going to turn. He hands the ball off to Prentice Britton. Oh, no. Britton is going to reverse field twice on this one. And now he's got a seam. Now he cuts up field. Oh. And I tell you, it, um, I think he may have made it back. Donnie's going to say he made it back to the line of scrimmage. Probably covered somewhere in the neighborhood of about 30 yards on the run but it's going to make it back to the line of scrimmage and no more. So it's going to be third down and nine for the Panthers. And he ran about uh, probably 60, 65 yards there, but um, just kind of back and forth there. He kept <laughs> evading tacklers, so not, not a bad job. It actually caused uh, two Eagle defenders to uh, to collide a little bit and kind of a, an odd-looking uh, collision, but both of them get up, uh, and, and they seem fine. It's a gain of, well, it's no gain, mm -hmm. and it's going to be third down and nine. A little unusual, even a run like that. You either make some, it's a big play yeah. or you lose big. But no, in that case, he makes it back to the line of scrimmage and no more. Third down and nine for Tensaw. Clock running, 3.30. Left to play here in the third quarter. Imaje Bethel brings the Panthers to the line in the shotgun. Good snap from center, and he's going to look to throw and does. Uh -oh. He's got a man downfield, and that's going to be incomplete. Actually, one of those that looked like his receiver actually went inside to go get the ball, and Bethel actually threw it to the outside. And uh, unfortunately, it's going to bring up fourth down for the Panthers, and it looks like they're going to send the punting unit on as uh, number 53, Tyler Matthews, makes his way onto the field. And Matthews, first punt, pretty good punt uh, on the night, but then the second one, uh, almost went straight up in the air. Yeah, that pass was intended for uh, number eight, Britton Prentice, and uh, it looked like it was and 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 Melton on the on the coverage there. So um, a freshman uh, out there uh, uh, playing defensive back, playing cornerback, and, and decent coverage, but the ball was just uh, just well overthrown. Well, Matthews did make his way onto the field from the sideline, but he made his way on to. Uh, to play left tackle for uh -huh. the Panthers as it looks like they're going to go for it here on fourth and nine. Mm. Quarterback Imaje Bethel in the shotgun, an eye backfield beside him. No, maybe they're not. Bethel's going to call for the ball, look to throw, and does. Oh. And this one is going to travel way out of bounds. Almost caught that time by Coach Stephen Fitzhugh. Yeah. Coach Sonny Vadreen with an opportunity to break on it, but he let Coach Fitzhugh take a shot at it. Yeah. It's going to be first down and 10, and now we're going to see a lot of fresh faces on the uh, on the Eagle offense. Yeah, this will be good to see. Um, looks like uh, Tucker Stutz is in at running back, and, and Zach White's at quarterback. Drew Dugan's in at kind of the H-back position. Uh, Luke Turpin, Mason Owens, Patrick Mercado in at receiver, uh, and a whole new offensive line. I'm going to try to get these guys. Drew Moser in at left tackle. Um, I can't really see the rest of the numbers. It looks like... Uh, Ryder Bentley's in at center, and Landon Ogden, uh, right guard, Reed, uh, Reed Messenger at right tackle. They're going to keep this one on the ground, and that one is going to, let's see if I can make out a number, Dan. It's going to be number 14, Stutz on the carry. He gets a nice pickup on the play before he's run out of bounds by the Panthers. And I'll tell you what, I mean, you, you do see, you know, a little bit of a dip here and there in performance, but, uh, well, as you say, I mean, Stutz is, is one of the guys that's had, you know, I would say he's had his fair share of carries uh, so far this season as uh, he comes in, a gain of 26 yards on that play, puts the Eagles inside the Randall's fine meat red zone with another community pharmacy first down first down and goal for the Eagles well actually it's gonna be a little less than first and goal call it well first and goal at the 10 he's gonna turn and hands this one off to Stutz again and Stutz is gonna be well he's gonna make it inside the five-yard line before he's uh, before his forward progress is stopped gonna be a gain of six yards on the play and it's gonna bring up second and goal now at the four yeah wrapped up pretty good there uh, good to see Tucker Stutz hold on the ball as he had a host of tensile tacklers trying to to bring him down and get the the ball back he tried to run behind left guard Carson Anderson and, and left tackle Drew Moser and able to pick up some uh, some positive yards so now they have goal to go on second down Second down and goal. Ball at the four-yard line of the Tensaw Panthers. 
and they're going to have to hurry to get this play off before the end of the third quarter, and they will, and Stutz is going to cruise in, um, and uh, not really not really a whole lot of effort to bring him down. So that's going to be a good touchdown from four yards out to add to the Eagle lead as the third quarter play comes to a close here at Fitzhugh Field. Out to handling the punt, hack to handle the extra point for the Eagles. Again, it's going to be number 24, Grayson Smalling. Smalling with a nice kick last time. Yeah. Garrett Simmons taking his spot as the long snapper, and Tate Hamby still the holder. Nice snap, good hold. Oh, wow. I'll tell you what, Smalling with another nice kick because that one's going to split the uprights, and it's good. The Washita Christian Eagles are going to increase their lead over the Tinsaw Panthers now, 51 to nothing, or actually I should say as Donnie just uh, pointed out to me, 52 to nothing. Yeah, don't, yeah. Donnie's not going to miss that. No, yeah, I guarantee he's not. And he's going to make sure you see it. Speaking of making sure nobody misses anything, we're going to go to our man in the tuxedo, <laughs> Stan Humphreys, down on the sideline with the Marion State Bank sideline report. How's it going down there, Stan? Well, guys down here next to the uh, the band playing a little music going on here, but, uh, you know, getting, uh, looks like we're into the fourth quarter now, and uh, uh, up 52 to nothing, and uh, it, it's going good, guys. It's homecoming and it's been a great week uh, getting some of these uh, young guys in the game and uh, uh, just kind of trying to get out of here without any injuries and, uh, and get on to next week. Absolutely. Thanks a lot, Stan. Stan Humphreys with the Marion State Bank sideline report. I tell you, you know, with, um, with with Elkins and Harold graduating this year, our kickers, I mean, it looks like that, uh, you know, it looks the kicking duties may go into good hands with Grayson uh, based on his, his two uh, PAT attempts. Yeah, absolutely. Nice kicks. Uh, definitely got his leg into it. Mm -hmm. Not timid, not shy, just taking his steps and letting it go. I think Grayson spent some time at scout team quarterback doing <laughs> uh, also and does a pretty good job there. So he's kind of a jack of all trades. Mason Minville is going to tee this one up, and Mason Minville is going to kick this one out of bounds. Going to travel and almost hit Stan Humphreys as it does travel out of bounds down there around the 25-yard line. Stan, you almost you, you you thinking about maybe taking a, a shot at that one, picking it up, catching it? Not even close. <laughs> Not even close. <laughs> yeah, I noticed as it was traveling right by you. I don't even think you moved a shoulder. Uh, no, nope, I wasn't going to move much. I might pull a hamstring if I moved that fast. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks a lot, Stan Humphreys. With the Marion State Bank sideline report as uh, the ball does travel out of bounds uh, right next to the aforementioned Stan Humphreys. And uh, it's going to be first down and 10 now for the, the Tinsaw Panthers ball at their own 35-yard line. As we start the fourth quarter of play, we want to thank Eagle Point Boat and RV Storage. Eagle Point Boat and RV Storage located on beautiful Lake Darbone in Farmville, Louisiana. Proud longtime supporter of the Washington Christian Eagle football. And again, we'd like to thank the, 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 uh, the fine folks at Eagle Point Boat and RV storage for their support. Clock running, 11:20 left to play in the football game. Washita Christian 52, Tinsaw 0. Homecoming 2021 here for the Washita Christian Eagles. The Panthers are going to go to work, and they're going to do it with quarterback Amaje Bethel. Bethel stands in the shotgun with four receivers. Now he's got one to the oh, side. Now man. he's going to get sacked. Boy, that young Eagle defense getting off the ball quick, fast, in a hurry as they're going to drop him for a five-yard loss on the play. Man, I have to say, number two, sophomore Parker Payne uh, shot into the backfield and put a really good hit, good clean hit on the quarterback. And, you know, Parker's gotten some playing time um, with the second unit in these games, and, and he's been able to to collect a couple tackles, two or more in at least two or three games. I mean, he's he's done a good job when he's gotten in there. So he's a, he's a pretty big kid, um, and, he, and he's, he's, he's performed well when he's had the opportunity. Loss of five yards on the play. It's going to bring up now second down and 15 for the Panthers. Ball back now at their own 30-yard line. Ten minutes left to play in the ball game. Bethel will stand in the shotgun, and it looks like we're going to have a timeout taken down on the field. We're going to take one with them. You're listening to Watch the Talk Christian Eagle Football on 92.3. The Wolf.
report. It's going to be fourth down for the Tinsaw Panthers. The clock is going to continue to run now inside of getting close to six minutes left to play in the ball game. Daniel, what time is it actually? I'm it's 8, uh, 8.55, so this game's gone a bit longer than uh, some of the other ones. I think it has to do with... Uh, you know, they didn't, uh, in the first half, the clock stopped a good bit. Uh, well, you know, and you probably want to throw in a marathon no, no, homecoming, yeah. right? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. No. So uh, homecoming half times can be rather lengthy. Yeah. You mentioned Tinsall's uh, loss to Dell High last week. I think that game went to overtime. Um, on, on the way home from Delta Charter, I was listening. I think they lost that game in overtime to Dell High. Well, it's a tough, uh, tough loss for, uh, for the Panthers as uh, the Eagles. Oh. Um, they're going to try the inside on, on a run play, and uh, it's not going to work out. So it's going to be a turnover on downs as the Eagle, uh, this young Eagle offense will, uh, will take the field again as uh, we work ourselves close to five minutes left to play in the football game. Clock, gonna, clock continues to run during the change of possession, run the clock here in the second half. It's going to be first down and 10 for this young Eagle offense. Ryder Bentley, who starts on defense, is now at left tackle. He played center last uh, last series. Zach uh, Kelmo, it looks like he's at center, and uh, that'll be a passing play. Uh, Zach White's going to try to throw the football that time. Looking for Hudson Ham, number 23. It's actually going to be incomplete, and it's going to bring up second down and 10 for the Eagles as the clock runs now inside of five minutes, four minutes, and 50 seconds left to play in the football game. Want to invite everybody to uh, to come back out to the school or join us uh, back on the live stream next week as the Eagles will host the Dell High Bears. And White's going to turn. He's going to hand this football off, and that's going to be a nice run. Actually, on the carry for the Eagles is number 35, John Turner. Turner with a nice carry is uh, makes one Eagle, one uh, Panther defender pay a pretty heavy price for the drop. Going to be a gain of nine yards on the play. Brings up now third down and one. Clock continues to run. Uh, almost, uh, let's call it four minutes and ten seconds left to play in the ball game. You know, a lot of these uh, a lot of these players in the game right now are freshmen, and, and Coach Fitzhugh does something pretty neat. The freshmen play, uh, you know, you have JV football, and then you have freshman football, and so when their season's over, oh, there goes John Turner again. Turner's going to take a uh, take. Turner's going to take the toss sweep from quarterback Zach White, and it looks like we got a penalty marker actually on the play. I'm not sure who that'll be against, but there's definitely a marker. Uh, on the play. Well, as, they, as, as I was saying, um, Coach Fitzhugh has the ninth graders. When their season's over, they, they come out there and they kind of try to get caught up to speed. Uh, Fitzhugh works with them in, individually, um, you know, on one end of the field and help, helps them learn the plays that they may be running or maybe seeing, trying try to, you know, just throw them kind of into the into the waters of, uh, of varsity football at Washtenaw Christian School. Well, we're going to go down to the sideline and check in with Stan Humphreys for the final time tonight as uh, we want to find out if Stan's got any parting thoughts, anything that he was able to pick up from the game tonight. Stan, what do you what, what do you take away from this one? Well, we may have missed him. We, we, yeah, we had a window there, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but as uh, you know, as uh, I, you you could you know, it, it, uh, the games like this, boy, I tell you, it, uh, it it starts happening quick. We're inside now, in three minutes, as the Eagles do get hit with a uh, with a holding call, and they're going to back them up. It's going to be now. Uh, it's going to be fourth down for this young Eagle offense. Call it fourth, and uh, uh, looks like uh, fourth and eight. You know, a couple weeks ago, we had the movie in the fifth quarter, and Stan kind of dipped out a little bit early. You know, tonight, we got the uh, Black Light Neon Homecoming Social. I wonder if he's headed over to the uh, uh, he's probably, he's for probably, that. He's probably got a spot reserved. I mean, one, yeah, or that, or he's going over there early. Yeah, that to tuxedo's going to glow in there. I'll just oh, say that. Oh, <laughs> absolutely. Guarantee you that's where he's going. Make no mistake, as the Eagles are continuing to let this clock wind down now in two minutes and 50 seconds. And we're going to have some fresh faces come in. Man, um, almost uh, almost an entirely new team. And uh, one of them is starting quarterback, Landon Graves. He's trying to get in. He's trying to get in. Because uh, Fitzhugh's maybe going to let him in. I don't know. Is he going to punt? Landon uh, might be punting. That's exactly what's fixing to happen. The yeah. Eagles are going to punt this football on fourth down. Clock continues to run now inside of two minutes and 20 seconds. Landon Graves on to punt for the Eagles. The Panthers are going to send a couple of guys deep. Landon's going to get a low snap from center. But he'll get one off the side of his foot. And that's going to travel out of bounds around the 25-yard line 
Clock continuing to run, and this will probably be the last possession for either team in tonight's game. You ready to hear an interesting stat about Landon Graves? Absolutely. Fifth all-time in punt yards with 1,826. 53 punt attempts, good for sixth all-time. So he added to both of those just now and maybe bumped up on those lists. It's possible, but that was not one of his better efforts. No, I know, but, uh, you know, 54 punt attempts now. And That's right. It's like about 1,846 yards or so. That's right. Mm -hmm. That's right. A few good punters, uh, a few good punters for the Eagles. Uh, you know, yeah. that's one thing. I mean, I remember a lot of our really good kickers. I remember, uh, you know, obviously the, the, the big leg of Keith Andrews, Man. Whit Chapman was a really, was a really mm -hmm. nice kicker. We had... Uh, we had several there for a while that were uh, really, really good kickers. You know, Landon's been handling the punt duties. I think this will be his third season uh, to be doing that, so he's accumulated quite a bit of, uh, of punt yardage. Absolutely. Well, I'm not sure that the Panthers are not going to let this clock run out. we got a minute left to play in the football game. Tensaw trails the Eagles 52 to nothing. Bethel is going to unload this one out in the flat, looking to find a receiver out there. Actually, that time looking for Prentice Britton again. It's going to be incomplete, but the clock continues to run now inside of a minute. 50 seconds left to play. I'm not sure that the Panthers will get a get a playoff before the game clock expires. And, I, and in all fairness, I'm not sure how motivated they are to yeah. get a playoff. Yeah. Um, will Blazer in at, at, at nose guard, and uh, they – it's kind of been a theme tonight for, for Tensaw. They've been taking their time getting up to the line. They stopped running the play clock pretty early in the game. Um, you know, so that looks like they're going to try to run one more. Well, Bethel's going to turn. He's going to hand this one to the up back, and he's going to be swallowed up by the Eagle defense. And I think that's going to be the ball game. As uh, looks like the Panthers of uh, <laughs> the Panthers are immediately making yeah. their way over to the sideline, and that is going to end tonight's contest. The Washita Christian Eagles are going to defeat the Tensaw Panthers now, 52 to nothing. Homecoming. 2021, the Washita Christian Eagles are going to make the homecoming crowd happy as they win this one in a big way. The Washita Christian Eagles are going to host the Dell High Bears next week here at Eagle Stadium. They're going to do the next two ball games here as we follow up Dell High with what is going to be a very good football game against the Mangum Dragons. And I've got to think, Daniel, as you alluded to earlier, probably going to have something to do with the power ratings uh, for both of those schools. Yeah, you know, uh, games like this, um, district opponents, you have no control over it. You have to, to play through your district. And this year, with COVID rules, um, a non-play game is going to result in a forfeit. And, you know, it's just not a cancellation. And so it's, it's actually detrimental to a team um, if that happens. And, um, you know, so I'm thankful that, that these guys from Tensaw came up here and they play this game. They play our homecoming game year in, year out. So, you know, shout out to them for uh, for doing that. They're rostering 21. And actually, I'll say this, last year they had only like 15 on their roster. So they've added some young guys that played tonight, played significant minutes. Um, you know, so it's, uh, you know, they they make the trip up here and we're thankful for that. And, uh, you know, <clears throat> we got to play, um, we got to play who's in our district. That's just the, that's just the way that the dice fall. And it's like that for everybody. And so you, you see teams kind of move up and down the power. Um, and it's not always based on a win or a loss. And so that's something that just, you, and especially football, is a 10 game season, like, you know, each game is going to have, have an impact. And so, um, you know, we'll see what happens uh, on Monday when the, the new ratings come out and, uh, and give you an update um, uh, next Friday. Coach Fitzhugh is going to meet uh, both, both of these football teams out at midfield here at Eagle Stadium. And uh, as, a, as a custom, as he always does, uh, these young men are going to leave the field here uh, after a word of prayer. Mm -hmm. And uh, something, that, uh, something that Coach Fitzhugh does, uh, does very well. Well, the Washita Christian Eagles are going to win this game 52 to nothing. I don't know if you want to take a minute to go through the stats of uh, stats of the game, but uh, you can wrap it up with uh, with the tonight's final stats. Yeah, I'll highlight a few. OCS defense uh, played really well tonight. Um, held Tensaw to actually negative 22 yards compared to 356 yards of <coughs> of total offense. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, passing, uh, we were 13 of 17 as a team for 156 yard yards, and uh, had 13 rushes for 200 yards. Um, it was interesting last week. Uh, we played Delta Charter. We did not have a, a third or fourth down in the first half. We did tonight. We were two of five on third downs. Uh, did not have a, uh, a fourth down play. We had three penalties for 40 yards. Um, three sacks for a loss of, of 12 yards and uh, 
trying to see how many penalties we had. Um, oh, I mean, we had three penalties, uh, turnovers. I mean, we we were able to force uh, uh, five turnovers, so that's something Coach Fitzhugh alluded to the game. And so uh, a good night for the OCS offense and a good night for the, the OCS defense. Chad Strickland had seven carries for 78 yards, two touchdowns. Uh, Tristan Wiley and Thomas Colt both had four uh, receptions. Um, Wiley was 73 yards, Colt with uh, with 45, and one, two, three, four, five, six, six receivers. Uh, 18 different. I mean, eight different receivers targeted. Uh, six of them caught passes. So Landon Graves uh, was 13 to 16 for 156 and three touchdowns. So another good night uh, for Landon Graves, and uh, and that'll wrap it up uh, for us here at Stephen. Uh, fits you field at eagle stadium we thank you all for uh, uh for listening uh to watch talk christian eagle football